let's continue. We're on the investigation part two. Investigation part one didn't really teach us much of anything except for the fact that this guy with a dumb name was trying to steal a jacket that had a bloody music disc on it. Baker Street. Oh, we're back at home. Oh no, this is the pawnbroker. Oh gosh. See, that's why I hate grown-ups. All they do is feed you a pack of lies and take stuff away from you. Well, I mean, when you're stealing stuff, sometimes they take it away. Is this one? This one isn't technically new. Great Ace Attorney One and Two have been around for a while. I think they were 3DS titles. Oh, um, but no, I have not played all the Ace Attorneys. I played the first three: um, Apollo Justice, Dual Destiny, Spirit of Justice, um, and I've been working on this one. There's some offshoots, but I haven't done. Them. Oh, really, Miss Lestrade? Tell me, is that overcoat keeping you warm? What? Oh my! Surely you were given that. Yeah, the D let me keep it after I looked daggers at him. He went through the pockets and said, Go on, then have it, before telling me to scarf it. Always pays off giving people who look like me. <laughs> well, I mean, true, it usually keeps them away. I mean, they're all, like, on mobile for pretty cheap, or I think that, um, obviously the first three are on, like, Steam. I think they're really cheap right now. Because there's a Capcom sale going on. I can't help a feeling that's going to get you into serious trouble one day. Well, she'll worry about that when it happens. You know, what I really wanted was that nice shiny disc on it. The music box disc. Yeah. But Mr. Windybank said it was practically worthless. Well, that doesn't mean that it's actually not worth anything, sir. I think I'm going to oh, have another flash. Give a long hard stare. I think not, Miss Lister. We shan't enter Windy Banks again today. Why not? It's not fair. Can we help them, right? I mean, if you play the original trilogy, the remastered one, it looks... Well, it's still 2D. That's the thing. Since this was already, like, I think... It, I'm pretty sure it was a 3DS game. They already had the models. They just had to kind of, like, pretty them up for HD. Police are investigating the scene now and taking a statement Mr. Windy Bank. That disc's mine. I had this ticket for this coat, and it was in the coat's pocket. It should be something else, eh? Well, that's what the rotten coat said, ain't it? Yes, he did mention something about another article, didn't he? Well then, that's mine too. Whatever it is. Now she's really pushing her luck. Yeah. Miss Lestrade, I think it's time to admit defeat. You've had your fall for the day. Yeah, and it's all your fault, Sholmes. What? What are your plans now? Will you dine with us this evening? What? What? Are we... Did we have plans for dinner? I already forgot. Eh? Iris would be delighted to cook, I'm sure, and I might entertain you with a modest violin recital, even though I was dumb and I picked up the viola and said my violin. And then he broke it. But Windy Bank didn't seem to care too much about getting a broken viola back. No. Oh. Yeah. Why would he come around your place, eh? Have you lost your head or something? What? 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 Okay. I need to be so rude. Oh dear, she's gone. I knew that if she was just embarrassed. Huh? Having reviled on me quite unnecessarily, I might add. I can't help wondering if perhaps you might turn up anyway. Interesting. Once she's had a chance to calm down, I think there's a good chance she'll decide to come. Very well, then. I'll inform Iris to set place for a potential guest at the dinner table this evening. And one more thing. I should be glad of your company later, too, while we live together now. Sorry? I believe I will have a rather splendid surprise to show you. What? Is it a murder? Exciting. What is it? It's a surprise, Cesaro. You shall have to wait and see, Miss Cesaro. Until later, then.
Is, is it, are we just going back? Oh. 3.46 p.m. Okay, is this, is it, is it dinner time now? Oh, Susie and Bruno, come in, come in. Good afternoon, Iris. Oxygen not include expansion. Oh, I thought, I thought it was a, oh, it was an expansion? I wasn't sure if it was like a free um, DLC or update or whatever, but maybe that's if you already had it. I'm not sure. I never played Oxygen not included, but I know Beth really likes it. A few other people I know. Thank you so much for breakfast this morning. Oh, don't mention it. Goodness, look at the time already. Easy as always. I am. I'm preparing everything for dinner this evening. Ready? You're obviously cooking something special, are you? Oh, yes. After all, we have a special guest joining us. Oh, who? Guess who it is. Go on. You'll never guess. Uh, those little eyes of her shining. Oh, dear. It's awkward when you already know the answer, isn't it? Maybe it's another guest. It's Ginny. Isn't that exciting? Oh, oh, what a surprise. Yes, that's wonderful news. Okay, no, it wasn't. Oh, Iris seems overjoyed at the idea. I can't wait to learn some pickpocketing tips from a real professional. What? Oh, yes, that does sound like fun. I'm not sure that's entirely appropriate. Are you Mr. Naruho, though? I, he can so... Uh, by the way, Iris, uh, what's Mr. Sholm's up? Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, because I, I know that's the whole thing. Is Obviously, you have to make your own oxygen, but you also have to, like, resource man it. Make sure people don't starve and all that. And assign jobs. Hurley? Oh, he's been like that ever since he got back. Is he sad again? Hello, Mr. Sholmes. I beg that you won't speak to me. Sorry? I don't know who you are, but kindly take your leave. What? As you can see, I'm not here. What? I, I don't know how to respond to that. I do apologize when he gets like this. He's completely oblivious to everything. Yes, I see. Really, he behaves just like a child sometimes. Curly does. He is a child. Mr. Sholmes and Iris have something of a parent and child relationship, don't they? I think Iris is the... the except, yeah, except that Iris is clearly the parent here. Yeah, exactly. To think of it, I wonder where her real parents are. Are we gonna ask? Is that a conversation topic? What's the matter, Runa? You have so, ever such a funny look on your face. Oh, no, it's nothing. I know what it is. Why does this girl live here with Mr. Sholmes, you're wondering? Am I right? Jeez, okay, why aren't you the detective? Huh? How did you- mm -hmm. Oh, Bruno, I can read you like a book! That's terrifying. That's dangerous. Don't worry, you can ask me anything. I won't mind. Okay, uh, anything? Okay, how do you know Ginny? So, by Ginny, you mean Miss Lestrade, the young woman from the McGilded case two months ago, right? Yes, who also stole my experimental smoke grenade launcher. Although, after that trial, I invited her back here and we had dinner together. And now we're the best of friends, are you? Oh, <laughs> what a lovely tale. Yes, now if I bump into her on the street, she runs away as fast as she can. That's... Oh. And I chase at after her down the back alleys. Interesting idea of friendship. Yeah. And then I let her have the latest color of smoke grenade I fell in. Oh. Like, do you deliver it to her normally or do you shoot her with it? There's so many beautiful colors in the world. Jenny wants me to make a whole rainbow. I suppose this means you've let Miss Lestrade keep the smoke grenade launcher, have you? Yes, that's right. Okay. I got bored of it anyway. Hurley always reacts the same way when I shoot him with it now. What? Or Hurley, yeah. Oh, I can't wait for Ginny to arrive. It's been too long since she came last came over. I'm so excited. 
just hope she does actually come. Yeah, well, we'll see. Living with Shelms. Why is that? I'm sure you've been wondering why it is that I live here with Curly, haven't you? Well, it has crossed my mind. That and where are your real parents? <sighs> Sorry, face again. My mommy and daddy aren't with me anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, they're just, like, in a different country. Oh, never mind. Mommy passed away when I was born. And at around the same time, my father, well, he had to go to a faraway land because of one of the cases he and Hurley were working on. Oh. Wait a minute. Did you say he and Hurley? Yes. Daddy and Hurley were always solving mystery, mysterious cases together. She didn't mention that before. Yeah. Oh. He wrote them all up in his diaries. That's what's in the metal chest over there. Really? He recorded them all? No, uh, that's how you make the periodicals, huh? So, you mean it's true? Mr. Jones? Really did have a partner with whom he tackled some of his most taxing cases? Oh, yes. I mean, it's always nice to have one, isn't it? So Mr. Sholmes' partner was your father? Exactly. Where's he now? Really told me I wasn't allowed to look in the chest. That only made me want to look even more. So I uh, opened it up. Found your father's memoirs. Yes, so I asked Hurley, who wrote these? He nearly fell off his chair. But then he told me, that's when I found out that the author of all those accounts was my father. Iris' father was Mr. Sholmes' partner. Iris' father. So what, what's up with this guy? I've practically lived with Hurley all my life. I was tiny when he took me in. So it came as quite a shock. I think he's some, I think he's in his teens. He's 34. She's 10! I forgot she's super young. She's 10. Okay. So he was still in his 20s. I mean, we're not really that old either. He's 16, and I think that Leonosuke is 7. And Gina is older than you. And then we don't know how old Edgar Benedict is, but that's a stupid name. It's definitely not good. And then Greg's. So it came as quite a shock when Hurley told me he wasn't really my daddy, I mean. What? It must have not. Wait, uh, but... I guess you could have a kid in your 20s. I wouldn't recommend it, though. I wonder why Mr. Sholmes chose to tell you, and at such a young age. Hurley says it's because he wouldn't have been able to hide it from me. No? Well, having lived with Hurley all these years, you might say that his ways have rubbed off on me. There are some things I can just see. Especially lies. I almost know when people are lying before they open their mouths sometimes. Why aren't you an attorney then? Right. Anyway, I was so fascinated when I read Daddy's Diaries. That's what inspired me to write The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes, actually. At least assume Mr. Sholmes simply told you all those thrilling stories. Oh no, Hurley's hopeless like that. Pete Bright doesn't remember. And yep, he forgets everything. As soon as he solved the case, it all but vanishes from his mind. Oh, I see. The other day, it was so embarrassing. As usual, he totally forgot about the case he just solved. So the very next day, he gathered together all the people involved and proceeded to solve the case again. Uh, okay. It was quite a shock for everyone. There might be something wrong with y'all. I mean, other than me. You can say that again, yeah. <laughs> you shared your father's surname, or you share your father's surname, don't you, Iris? That's right, Wilson. Daddy is Dr. John H. Wilson. I learned it from his diaries that he's a doctor of medicine, you see. That's what prompted me to study and study so that I could earn a doctorate as well. You're Ted. There was his father who went to some distant land as a doctor by the name of John H. Wilson. Oh. Court will now hear the trial of Ryanosuke Naruhodo. Oh, this is... 
kindly stand before the state before the court the name of the victim in this case. The victim's name was Oh, Dr. John H. Wilson! Oh no! Woo! Oh, your dad died in Japan! That's right. Visiting professor of medicine at Imperial Yume University. And the man who, in the most bizarre of circumstances, lost his life just before we left Japan. Oh man. Whoops. I had forgotten about that that case at the very beginning. Uh Miss uh Suzato. Yes. Perhaps we shouldn't pursue this conversation any further at this time. I think that would be for the best. Iris is over there like, are you hiding something from me? Ah, my dear fellows. Ah, Mr. Sholmes. Why ever did you not make your presence known to me before? I did, you jerk. Ha. Well, no matter now. So, how the devil are you? We, we've been with you for most of the day. Goodness, really? <laughs> Do tell me, Mr. Sholmes, is your violin unscathed? Hmm, my violin? <laughs> Whatever are you talking about, dear madame? Oh, um... Never mind that now, I have something far more interesting to show you! Behold, my dear fellows! Oh, it's another music disc. Oh, another music box disc. <laughs> no, no. Not another disc, Miss Suzato. This is the one Gregson demanded we hand over as evidence. Mr. McGilden's disc! Oh my! Then, then, what's it doing here? <laughs> you know, at times, Mr. Naruto, though, I think that I, that though I have an undeniable turn for detection, I may, well, be even more adept at larceny! That's not something to be proud of. Oh, that would be wonderfully exciting. I'd be your pickpocketing assistant. Can everybody please just calm down? And Runo could be our go-to lawyer if we ever got caught. No. Right. Plus, Susie has such beautiful handwriting, she could write all our menacing crime notifications. Uh, yes, I mean, what do you mean you'd be delighted? I say I want to learn some pickpocketing tidbits, and you're like, oh, that doesn't seem right. And then they're literally talking about doing crimes, and you're like, you know what? That sounds like a great idea. Like, Get out of here, Suzato. I'm just going to pretend this conversation never happened. Well. What do you mean, Lars? Did you... I, I don't understand. How did that disc come to be in your possession? I thought Inspector Gregson took it back to Scotland Yard. Well, he probably gave him another one. Quite correct. And that sort of uncompromising attitude is precisely why I always carry some of this. Andy? That's a bar of caramel, Mr. Chomps. Your one and only friend in times of loneliness, if I'm not mistaken. If you will humor me, my dear fellows, cast your minds back to when the good detective confiscated the disc. Yeah, but there was blood on it. I'll be taking that whatever it yeah, to hand it over. Oh yes, of course. We have no okay, yeah. It's all yours, Inspector. You did the sneaky switcheroo! For the briefest of moments, I had the disc in my hand, did I not? Yes, yes you did, but I still don't understand. <laughs> it was at precisely that moment that I summoned my one and only friend into action. I pressed the disc into a pair of bars like this. Oh wait, he made a mold? He made a mold out of chocolate. That's... That's amazing! That's actually like the smartest thing he's done this entire game. The disc and all the minuscule protrusions have made an image in the caramel. That still looks just like chocolate to me. It's just very hard. Indeed, 
This caramel is quite exceptional. I developed it myself, you know, for espionage. Suitably soft for making impressions, but resistant to melting. The result of a precisely controlled solution. How extraordinary. In this case, yes, it is. Carrying a pair of these on one's person frequently proves very useful indeed. Take a house key, for example. A simple press in its unique form is duplicated. I can enter anyone's property at will, and never without high sucrose nourishment. That's... Yes, it sounds illegal. From the image I was able to create this, I confess I was more curious to know what manner of music would issue from the disc when played. Do you play it? Do tell us then, Mr. Shant, what music does the disc play? Well, unfortunately, I have no idea. No idea? None whatsoever. I don't have... Are you familiar with the workings of a music box, my dear fellows? Uh, no, I'm afraid not. Goodness, you don't know, Bruno? What an idiot. Yeah, we, yeah, it's got the little, the little tines that play the notes and then the little nubs hit the tines and they plink. And you just set up all of the, all the little nubs so they make the song. It's the comb. Inside the music box is a special metal piece called a comb. That's what produces the sound. Small protuberances pluck the different teeth of the comb as they rotate past it, making the different notes. The first music box is to be invented using it as a rotating cylinder with protuberances on it. Yes. But then they made the disc ones because they're probably, like, easier to produce than the cylinder. But over time, a new type of player was produced, which uses discs such as these. With that development, uh, the popularity of music boxes spread far and wide all around the globe. Why exactly? Because the discs are easy to produce and can be interchanged to facilitate the playing of different tunes. And so isn't it crazy to think that we went from music boxes to like cassettes and then we went back to discs. It always goes back to disc. Although now everything's digital, but technically your hard drive runs off of a disc too, so you know. Because discs are, yeah, 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 yeah. There are a great many firms in Europe now manufacturing music boxes as a result. Yeah, it creates jobs. It is wonderful to be able to enjoy music even with no performers. But it's the very success of the invention that means we are now presented with an insurmountable problem. What do you mean? As you may imagine, the construction of one firm's music box does not match that of another. And we have no way of knowing in which music box this particular disc was designed to be played. There is no resolution to this problem, I'm afraid. It is quite intractable. Oh, I see. That does suck. I didn't actually... Yeah. Naturally, I tested the disc in those few music boxes I have at my disposal. But as you can hear, to no avail, or to no avail. What? What do you mean? The results were equally unsatisfactory in this one. So, I am presently engaged in acquiring an example of all the music boxes ever made in Europe. Every single one? That's early for you. Always taking things too far. Oh, nice. But, my dear girl, an unsolved riddles, riddle is quite repugnant to my constitution. But surely all the different types in Europe will amount to a huge volume of music boxes, won't it? 
yes, that is certainly true. In the worst case, I shall just have to ask you to vacate the attic room. What? No. Haha, <laughs> just joking. Okay. Magnus Gilded. Not a name I expected to hear again so soon. Especially, you know, with him being super dead. Yes, it's only been two months since that grizzly case. Mr. McGill did perish within hours of the trial's conclusion. Was it the curse of the Reaper? No one knows, still now. The omnibus was reduced to a pile of ash. Not a shred of evidence remained. And with the man's death, the truth about the murder in which he was so intimately involved was buried. Even though we successfully established Mr. Hill and his trial, the newspapers are still claiming that it remains an unsolved case. Murder of the Brookmaker, the Price Fire Mason. In the end, the truth of the matter remains a mystery. We still have no idea what really happened that day. Except that he's dead. And although Mr. McGilded was not was found not guilty through my defense, I still don't know if that was the right judgment or not. It would appear the case is not yet closed. Um, I bet he's still alive somewhere, this Mr. McGill. Well, it's time I started getting things ready for dinner, I think. Jenny will be here before long. Thank you, Iris. Oh, well, you must let me help you then. Of course, Susie, there's plenty to do. I think I shall investigate the condition of my faithful performing partner. Now then, where did I leave it? Let this be a lesson to you, Mr. Sholmes. Never leave anything too precious with the pawnbroker. Oh, yes. You may be right. <laughs> oh, that reminds me of something Mr. Windybank said before. He said that he had a manuscript of irises and pawn, didn't he? Did he? <laughs> Yes, he definitely mentioned it. Mr. Sholmes's latest tales of otherworldly mystery lies dormant in my storeroom, where his words, I believe. So, you heard about that, did you? I expect you were as incensed as I was. Oh, yes, the idea of such a wonderful story, languishing in Mr. Windybank's storeroom, gathering dust. My dear madame, I'm quite sure I told you already. The pawnbroker storeroom is the safest place for it. More secure than a bank's vault. And what about yours? Stradivarius, Hurley. Was that safe and secure? Well, there may be the occasional mix-up caused by a certain impetuous someone not too far from me now. Do you have any idea how long it took me to write that Baskerville story, Hurley? Oh, it sounds so exciting. The Hounds of the Baskerville, or the Hound of the Baskervilles. I should love to read it. <gasps> uh, why is everybody so freaked out? Oh. What's going on here? Yeah, I don't, what's happening? Why does it feel like an icy chill just swept through the room? Susie, what did you just say? Oh, wait, did you s did you sneak into the storeroom and steal it? Um, you said the Hound of the Baskervilles. But how could you know the full title? Oh my god. Well, that's... Did you steal it? Did you steal it from the storeroom? Are you kidding me? That's because Mrs. Otto is such a great fan of all the stories about Mr. Sholmes, of course. Oh my god, please. But Runo, the Hound of the Baskervilles, has never been published. What? Oh my god. When I showed Hurley the manuscript, he told me I wasn't allowed to publish it yet. I don't understand. Oh 
My God. That's why he said he'd keep it safe until it was the right time for the story to be made public, you see. So that's why the manuscript is at Windy Banks. And yet, how could Susie know its title? Oh my God. This, this is not tough. Well, Hurley, what's going on? Ah! Well, what is it, Mr. Sholmes? It would appear our guest has a right. Oh, okay. Well, change the subject. Did you? Did she steal the book? <laughs> Miss Lestrade. This was a bad idea. I knew I weren't welcome. I'm going. Nope. Oh wait. Uh, Miss Lestrade. We've all been eagerly awaiting your arrival. Haven't we, Iris? What is happening here? Su oh, yes, just wait there, Jenny. We'll have everything ready in a jiffy. Suzano, did you sneak into the storeroom and steal a book? Come along, Susie. Right, of course. It's a pleasure to see you here, Miss Lestrade. Please make yourself at home. Hey, B, how's it going? Welcome on in. Don't stand in the doorway, my dear girl. Come along in. What say you to some Mendel song? I won't take no for an answer. Mendelssohn it is then. Uh... Oh, the cat. Hello. Waga hi. Yeah. Waga hi is here. That evening, Iris prepared us all a meal that was even more delicious than usual. Mr. Sholmes' violin performance was in no way meddlesome. And Gina, as we came to call her, taught us all how to steal things from one another without being noticed. Okay, cool. Nice. Everyone thoroughly enjoyed themselves well into the night. Are we going to address the fact that I'm pretty sure Suzato stole something from the pawnbroker? Dang. Six hours later, upstairs... That was a very enjoyable evening, wasn't it? Oh yes, Iris's cooking was truly divine. And I feel as though I can still hear the enchanting strains of Mr. Sholmes' violin even now. Best of all, I bet I could steal the glasses from his lordship's face the next time we're in court. But I won't. Probably. Yeah, uh, excuse me, speaking of stealing. Naruhodo san could I consult with you about something, I wonder? What's the matter, Susana-san? It's... It, 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 oh, it's about the telegram I received. Oh, there's a telegram. Ah. The one that arrived first thing this morning, I suppose. Oh, no. Is that how you learned the name? I... I have been summoned. What? Summoned? What do you mean? The telegram was from the Lord Chief Justice's office. Lord Strongheart asked to see me. Lord Chief Justice, when? Tomorrow morning. What? Then we have to start preparing at once. Oh no, that won't be necessary, naruhodo san I've been summoned alone. Alone? What on earth for? Oh, for theft? I have no idea. I suppose I shall find out tomorrow. How did you know the name of the book? All this about whatever it is it's making me feel very uneasy. Oh, are you gonna go to jail? Am I gonna have to bail you out? Who's knocking? Who could that be? Oh, it's Iris. Good evening, friends. Ah, oh, Iris. Hello again. Oh, hi, Gina. And Gina, too. Yes, Ginny's gonna stay with us tonight. She's going to sleep in with me. Isn't that right, Ginny? Well, yeah. Lovely. Let me make a pot of tea. Okay. Well. You know, I've learned so much today. Oh, what in particular? All of those things Jenny showed us. Wasn't it wonderful? Ah, uh, you mean all those pickpocketing techniques? We had fun trying them out on each other, didn't we? I think I've awakened a natural talent. I can learn, learn a living from it. No. You might be getting ahead of yourself a little bit. 
So what brings you up to our humble quarters at this late hour? Well, you see, I came to return this. Wait, what? That's, that's mine. Oh my, however did you, isn't that on my arm? I told you, didn't I? I have natural talent for it. Oh yes, I forgot. Iris literally is a child genius. So anyway, here, you can have it back. Not that I really understand why you wear it though. Ah, thank you. All right then, good night. Yes, good night. Except you want to know more. So this is your office, is it? It's really dirty. What do you think, Ginny? I think I wouldn't fancy my chances with a lawyer what lives in a place like this. Wow, thanks! Yeah, me too! Ha 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 ha! Rude! It seems as though Iris here still has something she'd like to talk about. I suppose. She probably wants to talk about the manuscript. Yes, I suppose she probably does. I want to know what's going on too. Iris, I, uh... I suppose you're hoping to talk about the manuscript, aren't you? Aren't you going to tell me? I'm so sorry. I need a little more time. Please, what is that? Just admit if you stole it or not. All right, I understand. I hope I had. I hope I haven't made you feel awkward. No. Oh no, not at all, Iris. Not at all. What? Well, I'm awkward. I don't know what this is all about, really, but it's a story you made up. Is it, Iris? Is Mantle script or whatever you call it? It's not exactly a story that I made up. It's something I read in Daddy's diaries. Daddy's? That's right. I don't suppose I've mentioned it to you before, Jenny, but uh, my daddy was Hurley's assistant once. His partner. Eh? They solved all sorts of strange and mysterious cases together. Is is that right, mister? Uh, apparently so. I was as surprised as you are, though. And Daddy wrote all the details of every single case down, you see, in his diaries. So I study them to write my stories based on what actually happened. So, where's your old man now, then? Ah, he's dead! He doesn't know, though! He had to go away on urgent business to a faraway land, and he'll be gone a very long time. Like forever. So I've never really met him. Sorry. Oh, right. Come to think of it. I don't know anything about Gina's parents either. Perhaps we should ask her. This, that, that, this line of questioning seems terrible for everyone. Iris, this hound of the Baskerville story. I take it that it's another tale inspired by your father's accounts. That's right. I thought it was fascinating. But it's different somehow from the other cases, I mean. Oh, how? I don't really know, but it must be special in some way. Because after I'd written it and showed the manuscript to Hurley, he turned as white as a sheet. It was the first time I'd ever seen him like that. Pains me to say this after you've toiled over it for so long, Iris. But this story must not be published at this time. Under any circumstances. Um... Okay, this is that. But why not? It's one of my best works. I'm not at liberty to say. Not now, so please do not ask me. All right, then I won't. Man, she has a lot of restraint for a 10 year old. But I do solemnly swear that I will explain everything one day, Iris, when the time is right. What is that day gonna be today? And that's how the manuscript came to be uh, with Mr. Windybank, isn't it? Yes. Hurley said that it had to be somewhere very safe. 
gets my goat, that does. He's treating you like a child. She's tad. It's mean is what it is, keeping secrets like that. She's tad. I'm sure, I'm sure Mr. Sholmes wasn't trying to be mean. Eh? If he said he wasn't at liberty to talk about it, I'm sure there must have been a very good reason. Yeah, just like you. I think so too. Did you steal the manuscript? I need the novel. You lot are too trusting for your own good. But he can't pull the wool over my eyes. Sholmes is lying to Iris. I bet my life. What? Hurley's lying to me. I thought you said you could tell if people were lying. Ah, this is bringing like a lot of weird things in. Oh, well, she turned around real quick. Examine. I'm gonna examine you because I want to talk. Hey, Jenny. I'm gonna look at what about your parents? I've realized that I don't know anything about your parents, Gina. I ain't got any, have I? Never did have. That's impossible. You were born somewhere. Oh. Look, the East End's full of orphans like me. No one wants nothing to do with us from the minute we're born. Not even our mums. Oh, that's pretty sad, actually. But we all stick together. The older ones look after the little ones and make sure they get by. So that's why you're a pickpocket. Nah, diving's my life. I love it. I get a kick out of it every time I lift some pompous idiot's purse. Wow, okay. And that's also... And that's how we afford to eat. I'm like Robin Hood, ain't I? That's how I see it. Oh, Gina. I don't know if you're any better. I do think about it sometimes. What it be like have parents, I mean. I always thought it'd make everything all right. Haven't listened to what Iris just said. It sounds like having parents ain't always easy either. Oh. I mean, if you know you've never had them, you don't feel like you're always wanting to meet them. Yeah, this is also true. Ah, but both of your parents are dead. Oh, gosh. How are you supposed to? There's so much stuff that's just like we can't tell each other yet. It's true. Ah. Oh. Well, I do want to see Daddy so much. Ugh, well, you could see his gravestone. Oh, Iris. Ah, uh, well, this is a fun night, isn't it? Everybody's having a good time. Just having a very good time. What did you mean when you said you know Mr. Sholmes is lying to Iris? I mean, he just seems like an idiot. He doesn't seem like somebody who would lie. Well, he reckons he popped the mantle script or whatever, right? But come on! It's obviously a load of rubbish. Oh my, why would you think that, Gina? It's simple. If the story was really an old Windy Bank storeroom, there's no way someone from halfway around the world, in other words, you, would know about it. Ah. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> Sorry, Iris, but if you ask me, he's so rude. Without telling you. But Curly would never do something like that. I'm sure of it. Ah! Grumps do a lot worse than that, believe me. Barefaced liars, a lot of them. You just ain't realized it yet. That's just like the... This is just the plot of Persona, any of them. I'm telling you, that mantle script ain't like Windy Banks. You'd soon see if you had a look. Even if you think you can trust him, I don't. And Jones is a liar like the rest of them. Good, you're making her feel really good. If I'm honest, I've wondered if Hurley's telling me the truth sometimes. See? Oh, but I don't mean that I think he sold it. I mean that sometimes I wonder if he might have hidden my manuscript somewhere. Somewhere I don't know. Even though it's wrong of me to doubt him. Don't be too hard on yourself, Iris. Oh 
Oh my goodness, look at the time. Yeah, go to bed. You're 10 years old. Come along, Ginny. We should go back downstairs. Yeah, all right. And please, don't mention any of this to Hurley, will you? No, of course not. Good night, then, Iris. Good night, Gina. Good night, Moon. Good night, stars. You must let me make breakfast for you tomorrow morning. I insist. Oh, yes, please. I can't wait, Susie. Good night, then. Bye, Jenny and Iris. Iris. Sure is easy to forget, isn't it? Sometimes she speaks just like an adult. But deep down, she's still just a child. Well, I think it's time that I turned in for the night, too, Naruhodo-san. Can you tell me about the manuscript, please? Maybe? Dr. John H. Wilson, Iris's father, but also the name of the murdered visiting professor at Yume University. Can't be a mere coincidence. There's something deeper going on. Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. God, see, I hate stuff like that. When they just have like three to four lines of silence. Mr. Naruhodo. Mr. Naruhodo. That voice. That's Mr. Sholmes. Oh. What is going on? Is it morning? Is it night? What's going on? It's the middle of the night. Uh, it's Miss Lestrade. She's gone. Gina? She was supposed to be sleeping in Iris's room, but her bed is empty. Well, she's an independent young woman. She probably decided to go home, no? I think not. From speaking to her before she retired, I received the distinct impression that she was looking forward to breakfasting with Miss Suzato. No, I don't believe the girl has gone home, but I've been waiting for over an hour now. Over an hour? Oh. If you'll indulge me, look out the window, my dear fellow. What's this about? The blood moon has risen. Okay, uh... Oh, no! Oh, of are we right next to the pawnbroker, really? Wait a minute. Why is there a light on at this time of night? Oh, no. That's Mr. Windybank's pawnbroker. Mr. Windybank's. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, uh, she's gonna go look for it to try to figure... Oh, uh, God. It's simple. That story was... Oh, yeah, there's no way someone half the world would know about it. Yes. Okay, so now you're seeing if it's there. Did Gina have gone? Seems that you have some knowledge of the situation, Mr. Naruhodo. Yeah, I should probably share that with you now. Sorry? Oh, no, no, not really. This is not the time to be stupid. Everybody needs to stop, like, lying to each other. Well, anyway, we must investigate. At once! Miss Suzato. Or Miss Suzato. God damn it. Like... Can there, what is happening? Okay, it's four o'clock in the morning. The door to Windy Banks. It's open! And the lamp is burning. It must be Gina. Mustn't it? Unless it's Edgar. Let us hope it's nothing more sinister. What? Come, there's not a moment to lose. Clearly something is afoot inside. Oh no. Is Gina gonna be dead? I'm gonna find a dead child. One here. Oh yes, there is. Oh, oh, was that a gun shot? Ah, Mr. Shom, Shom. Oh my God, what the? Has Shom been shot? Leave me, Mr. Naruhodo. But after them, go. Right. There was a tall and a short guy. What is happening? Blast! I've lost them. Hello, hello, what have we here? Oh? The alarm was just raised from the pawnbroker, sir. Would you uh, know something about that? Oh, no. Officer, come with me! 
It's my friend, Mr. Sholmes. He's been shot. Shot? Uh, with the policeman close behind, I ran back to Windy Banks, and Sholmes was probably already gone. Or, hello? Oh. Hello? Oh, cutscene. Uh, Mr. Sholmes. Mr. Narado. How bad is it? Uh, never mind me, but there's much at stake. Behind that door. In the storeroom. Where's the Bobby? Where's the Bobby? Hurry. Whoa, okay, what's going on? What's in the, uh, is that? It's locked, sir. Oh. Uh. Oh! Oh, no! Mr. Windybank! And Ginny! Oh, no. Does she have... It's Gina! No, no. Is that a gun? Did I just see a gun in her hand? Oh, come on! How complicated is this gonna get? To be continued! Yeah, frame for murder. I've only been streaming for... I think I've only been recording this for like 50 minutes. So I this is gonna be a... Uh, I'm us I usually cut it off every time there's like a story break. But I think investigation part two and three are gonna be one lump because that was incredibly short. So let's see, uh, investigate. How many investigation parts are there? Bang, ah! I'll be all right, Mr. Narahoto, but not him after them, go. Okay, yeah, this is just recapping. I looked through the people. At that door, the store of hurry, yeah. Cheer on. Yeah, ah, oh, they planted a pistol on her! Huh? Yeah, it's it, it's Gina. Great. From that moment, Windy Bank's pawn brokery became a crime scene. From that moment, Windy Bank's prom brokery became a crime scene. Everything that followed happened in a whirlwind of activity. The arrival of the police, the preliminary investigation of the scene, and the questioning. It was just before dawn that I was allowed back to my lodgings at 221B. Oh boy. This is great. Oh, look, we're making tea. Okay, 621. I need more sleep. Oh, Iris. You're gonna be really sad. You, a telegram came, but all it said was, wait at home. Oh yes, we asked one of the policemen to have it sent. It was simply impossible to come back. When I woke up, I was all alone. Hurley and Ginny were gone. Everyone was gone. What happened, Runo? Poor Iris, she's trembling. She's dead. She's obviously trying very hard not to let herself get too worried. I'll explain everything that I know. Something awful has happened, hasn't it? Uh, yes, I'm afraid so. Okay. Uh, sorry to have to tell you this, Iris, but Mr. Windybank is dead. He was shot. We discovered it in the early hours of the morning. Oh, yes, I had a feeling. You did? Well, I saw all those police carriages pulling up outside a shop, so I knew something must have happened there. Dang. When we entered Windy Banks in the small hours, we disturbed a gang of two thugs. They ran out onto the street, and I chased after them, but they got away. So, it was one of them who shot Miss old Mr. Windy Bank, I suppose. I don't know, but... That's not what the police believe at the moment. Oh, why not? They've arrested someone else as their prime suspect, you see. Gina. G Ginny, why? Well, the thing is, uh... No, Ginny wouldn't do something like that. I mean, I know, but also the evidence. I know, I know. None of us think she did it. 
why have they arrested her? Because that's what they do. It's not police. I'm sorry, there's nothing I could do. Shelm's situation. So, where's Hurley then? Is he still there investigating the scene? Oh, bad news. He also had problems. He really ought to have some breakfast. It's not good for him to miss meals. I don't want you to worry, Iris, but I have some news about, uh, Mr. Sholmes. Do, do you? He was taken to the hospital this morning. What? Okay, this girl is just gonna have, like, a mental breakdown today. Well, um, when we entered Windy Banks, a gun was fired and he took a bullet. H Harley was shot? N no, no. It's, it's all right. His life isn't in danger. He just got shot. Really? Are you sure? Where is he? Which hospital? He's he's at St. Sinners. They're tending to him there. I must see him at once. I'm sorry, Iris, but you can't. Why not? That's not fair. I'm a family member. I should be allowed. No, I mean, nobody can see him at the moment. He's not allowed any visitors. They're preparing to operate, you see. D to operate? Well, he got shot. They gotta extract the bullet. Oh, Poor Hurley. Injured. Oh, now it's Mr. Jones. Hey, he got shot. It was the two thugs who were at Mr. Windybank's shop. They shot Mr. Sholmes when we disturbed them, you see. It was pitch black inside the shop at the time. My mind went totally blank, I'm afraid. I, I just froze. After that, I ran out into the street, but, well, they were long gone. I, I shouldn't have hesitated. I'm so sorry, it's my fault. I let them get away. I think that's a very good thing. Sorry? Well, if you'd seen which way they went and chased after them, you might have been shot as well, Runo. You know, that's actually, yeah, that's pretty smart of her. On top of everything else, I, I, I couldn't bear that. Oh, Iris. This is not our situation. Where's Susie, Runo? She's still at the police station. Oh, why? I expect she's still being questioned. The police said they wouldn't be finished for a while. Why aren't you there then? Well, I didn't get a good look at the criminals anyway, so they weren't questioning me for a while. And Miss Suzato stayed behind the scene to tend to Mr. Sholmes, so they didn't get started until later. Oh, I see. Besides, one of us had to come back to be with Iris. I'm glad Inspector Gregson agreed to me leaving her. You should have let me know and I would have come to the station. No, because no. I don't understand why they are so Ginny. It's not fair. What about the two thugs who are at the scene? Why aren't they the prime suspects? After all, they shot Hurley dead, didn't they? No, I, I mean, Mr. Sholmes isn't dead, Iris. God, this is all so horrible. The thing is, Mr. Windybank was found on the floor of the storeroom where he keeps all the deposited articles. And the storeroom door was locked from the inside. I see. But he wasn't alone in there. Gina was found next to him on the floor as well. Oh, no. And according to the detectives who investigated afterwards... Don't tell me there was no one else in the room. Yes, exactly. How did you know? It's the only explanation. Yes, the only explanation indeed. What do you mean by that, Runo? Well, ugh, what can I say? I'm damned if I agree, damned if I don't. Also, she had a gun in her hand. I'm afraid I'll need to go out again now, Iris. There's not much I can do at the moment, but I can at least try to find out how Mr. Sholmes and Gina are getting on. I want to go too. Take me with you, Runo. I can't just stand... I stand sitting, uh, I, oh, I can't stand just sitting around here waiting. I got confused. I'm not sure how I feel about taking a 10 year old child to the scene of a murder, but I don't want to leave her all alone here either. She's also written various mystery novels and things. I'm pretty sure she's fine. All right then, Iris, perhaps you can help me? Oh yes, I'd love to.
Gina's at the prison. Mr. Sholmes is probably in his hospital bed. And don't forget, we have to visit the crime scene. We need to conduct a thorough investigation. Yeah, I can see you're ready for action. I imagine Iris would appreciate going to the hospital sooner rather than later. Okay, well, hospital first, then crime scene. New location. Uh huh. Oh! Oh? Uh, what the hell is that? Chicken scratch. He's not here! No, that's strange. The nurse definitely said he was in the bed by the window, didn't she? Oh, I know it's probably happened. Hurley was being a big baby, and the bullet wound wasn't that bad after all, so he'd been sent home. He's in the morgue. I'm not so sure about that, baby or not. No question that it was a fairly serious injury that Mr. Sholm suffered. Oh. Hello, hello, what have we here? Mr. Gregson? Not Gregson, another Bobby. This ward is off limits, no visited. So what are you doing here, Ed? Well, I'll have you know we're Hurley's next of kin. Eh? Oh, well, beg your pardon then, ma'am, sir. A little lady and a curious Eastern gentleman, a great mystery solver as a mysterious family, eh? That's how you see us, um, sure. Where is he, Constable? Where's Hurley? I believe he is currently in the operating theater, ma'am, undergoing an extensive operation. Extensive? It has been several hours since we went in. What? That's a lot of operating time. Oh dear, is he gonna be all right? Well, it doesn't appear to be working, you see. The uh, anesthetic, that is. No? I have heard a report that a gentleman claims he may have had a little too much to drink last night. Coffee, please. Uh, anyway, I think it would be fair to assume that he won't be back here for several hours yet. I see. Thank you, Constable. Perhaps we should leave him back. Oh, poor Hurley. Well, maybe he shouldn't have drank so much coffee. I'm gonna examine this. I'm investigating third. What do you mean? That's definitely out of place. Maybe I have to look at the bed itself. This must be Mr. Sholmes' bed. Poor Hurley. I know. Looks as stiff as a board, doesn't it? Oh, I don't think that'll bother him. No? I often find him asleep face down on the floor, completely dead to the world. I think I'd call the police if I discovered someone like that. Yeah. Why is this not something I can look at? Whatever. You know what? Oh, we're, we're moving. I ain't got time for this. To prison to check out my main girl, Jenny. Hey, Jenny. How you doing? I'm glad they let you keep your jacket. Hello, Gina. Don't pull. Will they let you keep your gun? No! And your ammunition! Please. Oh, you still have the grenade launcher Hurley and I made. I wish she wouldn't point it at me all the time, though. What are you here for? Jenny, I have a feeling it's because of us that you've ended up in trouble. So we were thinking that we might be able to help you. Well, you can't. Sorry. You earned get lost. Don't be like that, Jenny. I know you didn't do it. You'd never shoot someone. I just know you wouldn't. You think you know me? Pull the other one. Oh. Who ain't got the first idea about the light so I'm a thief. I pinch people's purses when they're walking down the street. That's how I get by. If I saw me chance, I'd sneak into a pawn shop any day of the week. But she wouldn't murder someone. Just to see what I could lay me hands on. Get it? That's the kind of person I am. But, but, Ginny, I'll be in court tomorrow, they say. Some cove came by here and said he'd be a lawyer for me or the like. Said it was my right or something. But I told him to get stuff. I don't need no lawyer. I don't need no one. 
She couldn't be staring at me anymore, obviously, if she tried. Why are you being like this, Ginny? I have nothing to present. I don't understand, Gina. Why did you... Uh, Realistic jails wouldn't have prisoners keep their weapons. Zero to ten. I know, it, it's not playable. Zero to ten, worst game. He wanted me to sign some papers, representation papers or something like that. It's all gonna be rigged anyway, this whole trial. They'll pin it on me because I'm a kid. That's what grown-ups always do. Why do you think that? Because that's how it's always been for me growing up in the back slum. The old life. If you do what the grown-ups tell you, it'll get your mates dragged off by the coppers or worse. I've had it happen to me before and all, and sold out and nearly snaffled on the back. I don't know what that means. Can't trust no one, that's the point. As soon as you do, you're you're gone to grass. Dead. Wait a second, I need to look at the history. What is that word? Snaffled. Snaffled. I have to look at the word everybody we're learning. Snaffled. To take something for oneself, typically quickly or without permission. Shall we snaffle some of Bernard's sherry? Dang. Yeah, okay. Dang. I learned the word snaffle. That's a that's quite the word. For sure. Gina, listen, if you like, tomorrow's trial, I could... Forget it. Ginny? Don't you trust Runo? Nah, I don't. Wow, we're the same age. How could you not trust me? I'm a nice guy. <sighs> Look, I ask you nicely now. Just leave me alone. What happened? Yeah, tell me what happened. Will you tell us what happened, Gina? Last night at the pawnbrokers. There's nothing to tell. They get her to pay me, so I broke into the place and started going through the storeroom. The old bloke walked in on me. You know the rest. Are you really gonna try to tell me that you fucking... Act, you went in there and you shot this man in the back? Because I don't believe that. I don't believe that for a second. But why, Jenny? Why would you do that? You did all this. The place is full of stuff I could sell for a shilling or two. Diving ain't easy, you know. It's a lot of work, and half the time you don't even get nothing. Yeah, it's true. Is that really why you broke into the place? It wasn't to look for a manuscript? What? Are you sure the true reason wasn't something else? Give it a rest. What would be the point anyway, eh? Nothing I could say would make a blind bit of difference. Please tell us, Ginny. We'll believe you. Whatever it is. Believe me? Don't be damned. You can't believe nothing. Everyone lies all the same. And you know what? When it comes down to liars, I'm the biggest of the law. I've, I've told some unforgivable lies I have. What do you mean by that? What unforgivable lies? Jail, no charge. I support women's wrongs. This is true. What do you mean before, Gina, when you said you were the biggest liar of the lot? Why don't you tell us what these unforgivable lies you've told are? Maybe we can help. Sorry. We're out of time. They're going to want to question me. Ginny, please. Oh, yeah. I wanted to give you this. Something to remember me by. That's a snowman and a snow cat. Oh, it's a cat. That's a different cat. Photographic print of a really adorable cat. I found it in one of the pockets of this coat. Need no point in me having it. I wonder what this little photograph like that was doing in a pocket of that overcoat. Anyway, don't come bothering me again. Bye. Oh, Jenny. 
A white cat photograph has been entered into the court record. You know what that means? Time to look at it. There's probably something written on the back. Real. Look at the back of this print here. There's something written on it. 13th February, 9 p.m. Article deposited one small box. Loan amount paid 10 shillings. Redemption deadline, 13th April, 9 p.m. So this photographic print is a redemption ticket. 13th February? That could be significant. It was just two days before the murder on the omnibus, wasn't it? A small box. Doesn't tell us much about it, does it? Bruno, if Mr. McGill did still have the ticket, then presumably he never redeemed the article. So do you think the box might still be present somewhere in the shop? Ah, yes! It's something McGilded deposited. We need to investigate. Yeah! Podbroker's ticket box! Thanks for the... Thanks for the tip, scrub. I'm out of here. We're going back to the pawnbrokery. Yeah, we're at the pond. <coughs> oh, God. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Omega with the reels. No. <laughs> Oh my god, sorry everybody. <clears throat> I shouldn't be looking at my phone mid stream and recording, but god damn it. This is where it happened then, last night. That's right. The two thugs I told you about were obviously ransacking the place looking for valuables. But apart from the policeman in here, you wouldn't know anything had happened. There's no sign of disturbance, except for that thing on the ground. No, you're right about that, actually. <clears throat> In fact, if anyone, the police who seem to be the ones doing... Uh, yeah, it's the police who seem to be doing the ransack. I know what you mean. They're like a gang of organized criminals all dressed in black. The Bobby is right there. Oi! I heard that! Yeah. <coughs> oh, hi. Oh, uh, Inspector. Uh, <laughs> good morning. Don't worry. You're not a thug. You're not dressed in black. <coughs> Suppose I have to thank you for your vigilance last night. We got to the scene before it was disturbed. Shame you let the two rogues get away. Yes, I'm sorry about that. I thought you'd assign extra men to beat around here. To the beat around here, Gregsy. Now look what's happened. Curly's been injured because there weren't enough police on duty. Ah! Yeah, yeah. Your ladyship! No one told me you were coming. What? I expect you to take full responsibility for what happened to Hurley and see that he has the very best medical care. Of course, your leader. The very best doctors in the capital attended to him as we speak. And I don't think it's Runo's fault that the rogues managed to get away. Is it? Chasing criminals is the police's job. Absolutely, your leadership. As you say, ma'am, as you say. <laughs> what is that? What just happened? The gent in black is totally blameless, everyone in agreement about that. Don't you believe it? He's like a completely different person with Iris. Think about a personality. Oh, where are the manners? Are you thirsty, your leadership? Perhaps you'd like some juice? Some nice, refreshing fruit juice? Oh, why? Are you thirsty, Gregsy? I have some of my special herbal tea with me, if you'd like some. Oh, wow, that's nice though. <laughs> what is happening? Blug, 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 blug. Delicious! Ugh, lovely! Not oh, very much. That really hit the spot, your ladyship. I don't even recognize him like this. Yeah, he's like just simpering. Different man. <laughs> what do you mean, your ladyship? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So, how's the investigation going, Inspector? Nothing to it, really. Very simple case. This there's some very definitive evidence. We're just going to charge that diver we arrested last night, in fact. Gina, y you're gonna charge her? That's right. I should be able to bring her before the judge at the Bailey tomorrow. Definitive evidence, you say? What is it? Come on, show me. Your ladyship, as, as much as I wish I could oblige you, I'm afraid, uh... Oh, I see. You've already captured the pair of thugs who broke in here last night, have you? What the? And you're going to put them on the stand as witnesses, are you? How, how could you? How? How could you possibly know that? Because she's two? I had a feeling, that's all. I mean, to never try to keep a secret fire again. Shot Mr. Shanks, have you? Well, yes, they were rounded up pretty quickly by the lads on the beat. And Miss Lestrade is being held at the prison. She should be. That's assuming she hasn't lifted the key from the jailer. Mr. Shanks. Can you tell us anything about Mr. Shanks? What's his condition? Uh, sorry, I'm not at liberty to divulge that information. Scotland Yard make matters are strictly confidential. Well, I know he's being operated on at St. Sinners. Why can't I see him? I'm family, you know. I'm, I'm terribly sorry, your ladyship. It's the hospital's policy, no visit at all. Oh. The bullet must have hit an artery in his midriff and he's lost a fair bit of blood. Oh no. He didn't seem too bad in the first hour or so. But a hemorrhage like that is enough to make even the one and only Sholmes pipe down. Mr. Sholmes is a human like the rest of us, you know. Well, anyway, he's having emergency surgery right now. They've got to stop that bleeding. But he will be all right, won't he? Eh, they'll be able to make him better. Oh, yeah, of course, your ladyship. He'll be as right as rain before you know it. Really? How do you know? Eh, how do I know? Well, I'm there because, of course. Ah, uh, oh, yes, because Mr. Sholmes is such a great detective, that's why. <laughs> Better pray the doctors have a better grasp of what's needed to make someone well again. Oh dear, please don't die, Hurley. I'll report to your ladyship the moment I hear he's out of the operating theater. Hey, why do you keep calling her that? Um, I couldn't help noticing, Inspector. Uh, what? Out with it, sunshine. Well, there seems to be a marked difference between the way you talk to me and Iris. Watch the sauce, Sonny. I'm a copper and we don't go in for favoritism. But he's right. You do dress differently. It's because of those uh, adventures of Herlock Sholmes stories. That, that's why. Oh. Oh, yeah, because I forgot he's like a huge fan of them. Oh, and she mentions. Oh, yeah, so he, he, he kind of. Oh, okay. I crop up in them, don't I? Inspector Tobias Gregson. Oh, well, yes. That's because you're an acquaintance of Hurley's. What did you write about the inspector, Iris? Mm, I don't remember, really. It was one of Sholmes' lines. Gregson is the smartest of the Scotland Yarders, is how he put it. Oh, did I write that? And you know what that one line did for me? Eh? That very next month, my pay doubled. Doubled, I tell you. Whoa, okay. So she, he loves her because she gave him a huge pay raise. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, because everyone at the yard reads them. They read all the Sherlock Holmes stories. They've even set up a fan club for me. Of 
much. That explains everything. It was around that time that you became such a toady to me. Can you blame me? Well, it takes one bad word from you, and Sholmes could change his tune about me. Gregson, no. The great detective will say he's getting quite overrated these days. What would happen to my salary if it came out in print, eh? Oh, thank you for the willies. Can't tell you how many nights of sleep I've lost worrying about it. Yes. But that would never happen, Gregsy. Every month when the new Rants magazine comes out, my hands are trembling as I turn the pages. Oh, how awful for you. Here, have some of my tea to settle your nerves. Ah, uh, is this a thing? Ah, oh, lovely. Glug, 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 I get it. Oh, it's lovely. Delicious. Fantastic. Tell oh, very much, I hit some spot your ladyship. Tea total. Uh... Oh, yeah, there's actually something I was supposed to talk to you about. Mr. Narval. Yes, what is it? I've got an important message for you. I clean forgot about it until now. Important message? Wonder what it could be. Cry from Suzato. Important message, because she's still not here. Are you gonna tell me this important message is then, Inspector? Yeah, it's about that young lady. Only by your side, your assistant. Dear Susie, is she all right? She's at the station, isn't she? Or, er, she's at the station, isn't she? Being questioned, I believe. Nope, not anymore, no. She had to head off. Head off? Where? Remember, she had to meet with the chief. Yeah. The Lord Strong Park's office, of course. He summoned her. Ah, yes, of course. I forgot about that. Because, you know. One of the whipstocks took her there to the yard in a carriage after we'd finished questioning her. She asked us to tell you she didn't have the fare for the return journey and go to meet her there. She's got a nerve using Stockton Yard as a blue message in service. I see. Well, thank you for passing that on, Inspector. Why did Susie have to go see the Lord Chief Justice? I don't know. She didn't tell me. But I better head over to the Lord Chief Justice's office to fetch her straight away. Okay, well, I'm gonna examine some stuff, because there's definitely a broken thing. All right then, let's see what we can uncover. Boy, what do you think you're doing, Sunshine? You can't touch anything in here. Oh, but we were hoping to investigate. This is a crime scene for Pete's sake. Don't touch it. What's the problem, Gregsy? Luna's a lawyer, you know that. Oh, I'm ever so sorry, your ladyship. Ever so sorry, the rules and regulations are thorn in my side. Of course, if Mr. Narvolo uh, wants to, uh, was to have been was to have been properly appointed by the accused, that would have been another matter. Oh, God. The accused? No. If you could show me some representation papers, I'd be only too happy to let you know it's around. Did you hear that, Bruno? Yeah, we have to get, yeah, representation. Okay, so no nosing around. So it's time to move. New location. Well, let's go talk to Cesaro first. Okay. Yes. No matter how many times I come here, I always get the same sense of oppressiveness somehow. Somehow, yeah, that's terrifying. Like, come on. Do you think this place is oppressive? I think it's normal. It was just your crazy. So, I mean, look at that suit of armor over there. You can't take that seriously, can you? Maybe it thinks the same about you. So everything is clear with regard to tomorrow's arrangements, I trust? Yes, thank you very much. Yep. There they are. Suzanne-san and Lord Strongheart. I wonder what they're talking about. They, look, they both look very serious talking about? They both look very serious. Sorry if I said that twice. Very good. There's nothing further to discuss. You may return to your lodgings. No doubt you have much to do in preparation for your return to your homeland. Uh, what? What? Her return to her homeland? What did he just say? Your return to your homeland? Cesaro-san! <gasps> Oh, you overheard that, did you? 
What are you gonna do about it? Cry. Oh, um, Mr. Naruhodo. Oh, nice birds. What was that all about? <laughs> oh, Mr. Naruhodo. Thank you for coming to collect your coat. What's this all about? What are you talking about? Miss Suzato's return to her homeland. And end tomorrow? That's really soon, actually, yeah. Tomorrow? What, what about Ginny's trial? Y you mean... She's been formally charged now? Oh, dear. Oh, boy, this is looking bad for the whole team. What do you mean, returning to our homeland? Miss Susanna, what is this all about? Turn yourself, Mr. Naruto. It's only me going back to Japan. Your life here can continue just as it has. That's not what I asked. What happened? Why are you leaving? It's my father. He's fallen ill. Oh no! What? How many things can happen? Professor Mikotoba? But he seems so jovial and full of life and vitality. If okay. Yes, sorry. Who must be the defendant? <laughs> Ria no Suke. Naruhodo, I believe. Yes, yes, that's right. My name is Yujin Mikoto. I'm a professor of forensic medicine at Yume University. moving the ottoman so I could actually rest my legs on it. I heard of my legs. We received an international telegram from the Empire of Japan informing us of the news. Ten days ago, father collapsed with a fever. The cause is apparently unknown. And it seems he grows weaker day by day. I, I don't believe it. As you are aware, the voyage from here to your country's capital, Tokyo, takes some 50 days. Oh, travel is nuts. I thought it would be prudent to hasten Mrs. Suzano's departure as much as possible. Yes, absolutely. I will leave London first thing tomorrow morning. I can't believe this is happening. So what about Gina's trial? I need my second. So Gina has been charged. She'll have to appear in court. Yes, she was formally charged a few hours ago and the date of her trial has already been set for tomorrow. No, not even 24 hours later? Gina? Ah, oh, the Lestrade girl and the murder of Baker Street pawnbroker, yes. An all too transpicuous case. This pickpocket was clearly disturbed mid robbery and shot the man in panic. But he was shot in the back. If she had panicked and seen him, she would have shot him in the front. So that's already an in. That, that's a discrepancy right there. No, the yard is overstretched as it is without wasting time in these open and shut cases. It's not wasting time. Jenny would never do something like that. Who is this urchin? Mr. Naruhodo? Oh, um, yes, Lord Strongheart. In deference to of your fine services to date, I shall overlook this young girl's insolence. But I have no recollection of admitting a child into my office. Leave now. Oh, you don't know who she is. Of course, Lord Strongheart. Criminals will tell the most palpable lies in order to evade justice. The police can ill afford the time it takes to unravel all their untruths. Meanwhile, more crimes are perpetrated. We have far more serious matters with which to contend. Serious matters? Didn't Gregson mention something like that yesterday? Yes, Inspector Gregson made a similar remark yesterday. It's no concern of yours, though I'm sure I need not remind you of that. Thanks!
What a dick. Three minutes precisely until my next meeting. You must excuse me. There's just one more thing, Lord Strongheart. Which is... It's Miss Lestrade's trial. I wonder if you might permit me to defend her. A timely suggestion. Sorry? The girl currently has no representation. But, but, but that's not fair. Yeah, she may be a pickpocket, but she still deserves a fair trial. She also refused that. That's the thing, I think. Do not misunderstand me, young lady. The government provides for those too poor to afford representation with a public defender. The accused need only sign the relevant paperwork, and a defense barrister will be assigned to the case. However, the young girl in question has refused that right. Why would she do that? I don't know. We just talked to her. It's because she doesn't trust anybody. She literally told us. A question you would do well to direct at Miss Lestrade. You will find her at the local prison. Yes, thank you. Now then, it's time I was leaving. Good day to you. I will definitely take care of things. Stop. Stop Hector. What a day. Gina charged with murder. Cesaro's not about to leave. Come, oh, Mr. Narhodo. Iris, we must make haste. But, Susie, you're leaving for Japan tomorrow morning, aren't you? Don't you have packing and things to do? As Mr. Naruhodo's judicial assistant, my personal circumstances are of no consequence. My sole purpose remains to help you in whatever way I can. Thank you, Miss Suzano. That's a very pensive look. I think we ought to visit Gina first. In any case, I should like to wish her well before I leave. Yep. Yes, that sounds like a good idea. Let's go. I'm honest, this has completely thrown me off. I'll just have to do what I can, as a lawyer. Okay, well, back to prison. Uh, 16th of April, local prison cell phone. Ah! Hello again, Gina. Stop pulling that out. I wish I could skip these animations. I get it. What are you on here for now? To have the muzzle of that grenade launcher shoved in our faces yet again, obviously. Oh god, I think I'm getting the hiccups. I don't want those right now. This is a lot of talking. I don't need hiccups. Hmm. I think I need to improve the, way, improve the way you load ammunition into that thing, don't I? It's far too slow. Look! You can come as many times as you like, but I ain't got nothing more to say. Except now you do. Gina, I wonder if you might hear me out. There's something I'd like to say. <laughs> what? I'm sorry to say that I must reluctantly bid you farewell. Eh? Farewell? Tomorrow I must begin my journey back home. To Japan. I fear we may never meet again. Oh, right. I've had the pleasure of meeting so many lovely people here in London. I have so many wonderful memories. And yet, as things stand now, it will be a glum parting indeed. Poor Iris is so miserable. Susie. Well, well, that ain't my business. It is your friends. Stop being a jerk.
Both Iris and Mr. Narahodo believe in you to be innocent, Gina. They put their faith in you, even though you don't trust anybody. But somehow, you can't find it in your heart to put your faith in them. Yeah, that's right, I can't. What of it? It grieves me greatly to have to say goodbye to my friends when they're so clearly unhappy. Because of you. Ah! What? Well, it's my fault? Yeah, you're kind of being me. Yeah, so I have one final request, Gina, before our paths never cross again. Right here and now, I want you to show both of them that you don't deserve the faith they've invested in you. Damn! Wow, God! Holy shit! Well, I mean, kind of. But, I mean, she should kiss. All the girls should kiss, and I should just be here like, well, I mean, this... <laughs> It makes them happy. Yeah, and also kiss. Do that too, after. Eh? Only by doing that will you truly be as alone as you claim to be. <laughs> what are you talking about? What do you expect me to do, eh? You've told us that everyone lies in your life right now. So prove it by admitting one of your own untruths. Damn, caught her in her lie. What about what you said before, Ginny? You said something about unforgivable lies. You must tell Mr. Naruhoto and Iris the truth now. Yeah, do it. That is my last request before I leave. My last request as judicial assistant. Sorry, I'm also increasing. That'll make things easier. I'm reading you guys on my laptop. Yeah. No, I I can't. I, I'll do the kissing thing. That's way easier. Whatever these lies are, they're obviously weighing very heavily on Gina's mind. Gina, I could be wrong, but is it something to do with what happened two months ago? Something about that trial? I mean, all three of the original Ace Attorney games, we had that tension between uh, Edgeworth and Phoenix, right, so there's got to be some kind of tension between other people. It can't be an Ace Attorney game without it. The one in which Magnus McGilded was acquitted? Yeah. Hmm. Ah! The case of that mysterious murder that took place inside the omnibus. You were called as a witness by the prosecution. Is that what this is about? Yeah. You're right. Because in that trial, I lied. I lied! I lied like you wouldn't believe. Uh-oh. Will you tell us about it now? Nope! Bye! Oh, never mind. I have to talk the trial two months ago. I lied because I said I didn't like girls. But I love girls! Like you said, it all happened two months ago. The coppers got old, old of me and shoved me in the witness stand. And based on your testimony, Mr. McGilded was declared innocent. Yeah, well, and the thing is, I lied about a whole bunch of stuff. Knew it. Knew it. What sort of thing did you lie about? I wonder if the Chief Justice was the one that told her to lie in order to be set free. I was hiding under the seat that night. That was the truth. It was pitch black in that little cubby hole. I couldn't see a thing, and then... Thud! I heard that loud thud like someone falling on the floor. And that was when Mr. McGilda discovered you. Yeah. He pulled me out from under the seat and sat me next to the dead man. There weren't much light to see by, but when I looked at the ads, I had the cove's blood all over them. I was so scared I couldn't even speak. And his blood on your hands? In other words, it was Gina that the witnesses on the roof deck saw through the skylight. Uh-oh. Then... 
Then Mr. McGilded started asking you questions, I suppose. Who you were and why you were hiding under the seat. Yeah, he did, only that's not all. What do you mean? I mean, he threatened me. Threatened you how? He made me swear about what I'd seen and what I'd heard. And what he was going to do after the cove was found dead. He made me swear I wouldn't tell no one about any of it. If I did that, he said he'd let me scarf her before the copper showed up. So yeah, 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 he lied. Oh, I just saw you go to catch it. Gina, you must tell me what he swore you to secrecy about. He's dead now. What you saw, what you heard, everything. Whoa! Oh, God, there's so much talkies. You said Mr. McGilded made you swear not to tell anybody what you saw. But you were in the pitch black compartment under the seat the whole time, weren't you? Yes, with Mr. McGilded sitting above your head, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's true, but, uh, it was when I heard the thud of the cove in the floor that I let out a little scream, see? Couldn't help it. McGilded heard that and dragged me out by the arm, and that's when I saw it. It was on the floor next to the old geezer what had been stabbed. A disc, all bright and shiny. A disc? You mean... <gasps> yeah, that's it. The one what D took off me at Windy Banks. So the music box was there on the floor of the omnibus. Which is how they got it. Also, congratulations. Not for long. McGill had spotted it straight away. Not for long. Uh, yeah, you know what He picked it up smartest and stuffed it inside his pocket. So that disc was in the omnibus two months ago at the scene of Mr. Mason's murder. And the bog trotter told me I weren't to mutter a word of it to no one. Okay, what you heard. Suppose it was so dark under the seat in the cab, I was straining me ears the whole time. After a while, I heard the door and footsteps inside the cabin. Presumably that was McGilded getting on board. Nah, not only him. Oh, the other guy. Because I could definitely make out the footsteps of two people. In that case, it would seem likely that it was Mr. McGilded and the victim. Mr. Thrice Fired Mason. In his testimony during the trial, Mr. McGilded claimed he slept during the carriage ride. That was a lie. Yeah, he's fierce tiredness and he fell asleep. Shut up. And your own testimony, Gina, supported this. She lied. She just told you that she had to lie because she was being threatened by Mr. McGilded. Yeah, that weren't exactly true. Neither of them was asleep. I could hear them talking the whole time in low voices. What? What, what were they talking about? Sorry, I don't know. The sound of the horses and the wheels was too loud. But that still tells us something. Mr. McGilded and the victim knew each other. Oh, that was three years ago. Man, you the Origami King. You know what? I like that game. I, I don't know. I still I think I have the nostalgia factor for the Thousand Year Door and all of that. There, I think the puzzle aspect was really what got the gameplay was a little... But I mean, the 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 writing was still very good, and uh, like there were a lot of very good things about it. I just, I don't know, the battle system really threw me off the whole time, and the fact that old girl wouldn't stop talking, suffered from Navi syndrome. But other than that, anyway, sorry, went off on a tangent, but seeing that, oh god, that brings back memories. So McGilded was lying, as I suspected. I should play more of the Paper Mario games on stream, like the handheld ones. Oh, that would mean I'd have to play Superstar. Oh, I, I hated that one. I knew it weren't going to take long before someone raised the alarm and the bloke had been killed. 
Or that the blue. Yes, you're quite right. The other passengers on the roof deck noticed very quickly. So when the cab came to a stop, McGilded told me to eye it back under the steel again. I climbed in and, and waited. Two cows up top ran off to get the coppers. Yes, uh, Mr. Fairplay and Mr. Furs. Right, and after they'd gone, Miss Gilded asked the driver to do him a favor. A favor? Oh, he, cause he's got money. No, then, well, what I need you to do is take this coat of mine and deposit it into the nearby pawnbroker. <laughs> End for your troubles. Let's see now. I, I'll give you 10 guineas. Oh, that's a lot of money. A nearby pawnbroker? You mean on Baker Street? Yep, you got it. It was Windy Banks. The coachy snapped up the money and ran off to pop this coat as fast as he could. So then there was no one left in the carriage. Mr. McGilded opened the box into the seat and let me get out of there, but not without conditions. I see. Well, he's dead now, so it doesn't matter anymore. What were his conditions? What were McGilded's conditions then? For letting you go free, I mean. Not telling a soul, not for anything, anything about what I saw and what I heard. And there was something else that was well. There's more? Yeah, this is the most important thing, he said. I'm after sending the coachman on a little errand for me with some small changes in his head. Now then, did ye hear what I asked of him? Did ye see anything at all, at all? You asked him to go pop your weasel, right? I, the fiend's taken me over a coat to deposit in pawnbroker's hair about. And I want you, last to take the redemption ticket for it. Do you understand? What? Want me to have the ticket? That's right, and I'll come and fetch it from me later. Sometime within the next two months, if I'm not dead. You're to hang on to it until then. Is that clear? And whatever you do, don't lose it. All right then. I'm trying. I feel like I'm getting better at it, but I'm also, I'm just not good at doing like girl voices and I'm especially bad at doing like higher pitched voices while trying to do an accent. So there's probably not a whole lot of differentiation here, but I'm doing my best. And in case I might happen to be delayed at all, you're to go to the pawn shop, Windy Bank, so it is, and you're to extend the loan for the two months is up. If ye forget, the article will be forfeited, and any old fiend could come along and buy it. Eh? What? I ain't got that kind of brass. Here's five pounds. That should be enough. <laughs> it's a little heavy. <laughs> no, like great pounds. Sorry. That was just a little word you heard. Do we understand each other, loss? Don't try anything funny now. If ye, uh, if ye go against me, yeah, I get it. Good. And one more thing. In a few days from now, you'll be visited by the police, I have no doubt. The coppers? Aye, they'll come asking you to take the stand in court and testify as a witness. So let's just have a wee chat about that, shall we? What is it that ye might say, and what is it that ye won't? And then, that's the story of the talkies. She had to lie because the, the man, and he's dead! This is complicated. After he'd gone all over it all, I piked it, got as far away from there as I could. He hid the pawnbroker's ticket in some bushes near the scene. I went to fetch it the next day once it got dark. So McGilded planned it and coerced Gina into giving false testimony. Damn. It's pretty deep. I mean, I kind of figured there was something fishy going on. I bet you're ready to string me up, eh? I lied in that big old courtroom. I told some corkers. The thing is, he said he would make it so we wouldn't live in the East End no more. That's what he threatened me with. What a wicked man! He knew everything what went on in the back slums. He knew we had no one to look after us, and we was all just looking out for each other, getting by together. So you mean, Mr. McGilded would have... In an heartbeat, he could have had the lot of us chased out of there if he wanted. And then, where could we have gone, eh? Nowhere, that's where. So, I didn't have no choice. 
Thank you, Gina, for telling us everything. You're super arrested. But I'm in for it now, eh? Go on, admit it. You must be livid. Well, you can make amends by doing me a simple favor. Favor? What? Sign the representation papers for tomorrow's trial. Eh? You don't actually want me to represent you in court. You can rip it up later. But we need that paperwork we can't investigate. The police won't let us. I investigate what? The scene of the incident last night. Mr. Sholmes was shot, you see. You, what? Hurley's having a big operation right now, Ginny. Is it bad? Is he gonna be all right? Sholmes is gonna be all right, right? That's why I want to investigate, for Mr. Sholmes' sake as much as anything. Right, so what you're saying is if I sign that bit of paper, everyone's happy, is that it? Uh, something like that. Miss Suzato? Yes, uh, of course, I have the representation papers here. I, I don't need no one to stick up for me, though. N no lawyer, nothing. Is that right? What? Did she sign the papers anyway? No. Oh. Poor Ginny, she seems so lonely. Yes! <laughs> Gina's representation papers have been entered into the court record. Well, at least this should mean we can investigate the scene at Windy Banks now. Yes, and perhaps we can come back to visit Ginny when we're done there. I'm sure. I feel like we finally cracked Gina. She's opened up to us at last. And now I have her representation papers. No one else knows just what a responsibility that is. Anyway, for now it means Inspector Gregson can't stop us investigating at Windy Banks. Ha ha! He can try, but I'm legally obligated to be able to do so. Although something tells me he's not going to be happy about it. Well, it's fine. His lady should. To be continued. Jesus. Uh, okay, so this is just split up kind of weirdly. I'd kind of prefer if all of the investigation parts were just like... It was just like a cohesive chunk. Instead of... In because I think we're working on investigation part... Four now, jeez. Yeah, this is all. This is just gonna be one long video. Jones? Yeah, we did it. Good going. We're nearing the halfway point of episode five. I'm gonna assume there's gonna be like four trial sections after this, or maybe three. I don't know. We're back at the pawn brokery. Here we are again at the scene of the crime. With Mr. Tobias Gregson. Now to thrust these representation papers in Gregson's face and see what he makes of them. He's probably gonna be like, oh, I guess you did. Hello again, Inspector. Do you have a minute, please? What is it now? You should go home and get some rest. Here you are, Gregsy. Here are the representation papers. Oh! I don't believe it! How the devil did you get that stubborn little ragabash to sign that? I salute you. That is good work, that is. I can see you've been very busy here as well. Yeah, now I can, now I can finally investigate. How about some tea? I don't, stop giving, how much tea do you have in there? Ah, how lovely, very good. It is a fiddle, thanks. Would it be alright if we investigated the scene of the crime then? Do as you please. You know where it happened. Through the door behind the counter. Yes, the storeroom. That's where I discovered Mr. Windybank and Gene. Right, well, I'll be getting back to business then. Leave me investigating the storeroom as well, Inspector. If I'm perfectly honest, we need to wrap this up before long. Can't afford to spend too much time on it. But there's so many articles to go through, it's taking forever. Even if the lines are working around the clock. 
Which is a problem because there is another case of the yard he that the yard needs to investigate urgently. I say Lord Strongheart means by far more serious matters before. So what I'm saying is don't get under my feet, sunshine. Yes, sir. Come then, let's not waste any more time. Okay, well, it, I feel like I've wasted a lot of time, but don't worry about it. Um, right? Let me zoom in here. A carrot. Behind that door is a storeroom, isn't it? That's what Gregsy said. Okay. Uh, Cesaro? Yes, and that's where I saw the dreadful scene last night. Through the little window on the door. Yeah, he was definitely shot in the back from that gunpowder. There's no way that she was surprised by him and shot him in the back. Because they would have seen each other from the front. So somebody else shot this man in the back and then planted the gun. Mr. Windybank, face down on the floor with Gina beside him. As the accused legal representative, you have right to examine the scene, Mr. Nakamura. We must make a thorough investigation. Yes, of course. And we will. <laughs> Behind that door, that's, that's the real scene of the crime. Don't worry, if there are clues in there, I'll find them with my special blood-finding goggles. Okay, can I... How do I get over there, then? That looks that way. This looks... Maybe I just have to... Okay, let me go in the storeroom. Find that door. Yeah, it's a storeroom. Yeah. Can we go in the storeroom, then? All right, we can't... Uh, I guess I can't go in the storeroom yet. Yeah, she has nice goggles. Autoplay. Uh, if there's clues, there are clues in there. Let me go back there. Let's look at this. What is this? Oh, the lamp is broken. Uh, there's an article ledger here in Mr. Windy Bank's notes. And what's this? It looks as though someone has left a little photographic print behind. Oh, look on the back. There's some writing. Is there? Oh, show us, Susie. Show us. Fifteenth February, ten thirty p.m. Article deposited. One gentleman's overcoat. Is that a bloody handprint? Loan amount paid. One pound. Redemption deadline. Fifteenth April. Okay. Gentleman's overcoat pawned for a pound. Clearly, this is a very fine overcoat. In fact, I think. Uh, Yes, this must be the ticket for the overcoat that Ginny redeemed yesterday. And is still wearing, which belonged to the Gilded. I would have never expected the redemption ticket to be handwritten on the back of a photograph, though. It seems Mr. Windybank used whatever piece of paper he happened to have on hand. Isn't that two cat photographs? But this photograph of a cat looks very familiar, doesn't it? Oh, yes, you're right. Very recently. It's the same as the one Ginny gave us earlier. Of course, I was forgetting that she gave us that print. What are you waiting for, the Mr. Narahodo? Get it out! All right, all right. Let the cogs turn. Put them next to each other? Yeah, that's literally... Oh, wait, 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 wait. The cat looks a little different, though. Yes, they are exactly the same. I don't... No, doesn't the cat look a little... Or is it a perspective thing? What is... Something's throwing me off. No, no, the cat is definitely a little different. Mm -hmm, I've got it. These two photographs hide an amazing secret. A secret? What does she mean? Yeah, what do you mean? You must tell us that... Iris, at once! Yeah, tell us Hmm. Do you really, 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 really want to know? Yes, I do, Iris. Yes, we need to tell us if you know about his pair of photographs. There's a converse with her about the pictures. Just tell me! You gotta make me jump through hoops. So, Iris, about these two uh, photographic prints. 
the ones we found here on uh, Mr. Windybank's counter and the one Gina gave us before. What's this amazing secret you mentioned that's hidden between these two identical prints? They're not identical. That's the problem. Actually, that's not quite right. Sorry? If you look carefully, these two prints aren't the same. Not exactly. I know. I figured that out. Gosh, I'm my brain. I'm big brain. Big brain. They're not. Have another look at them now. Yeah, there's definitely a slight difference. Can you see that they're just slightly different from each other? I, I think so. It's very subtle, though. Yeah, it's also like the cat is looking at something. But what's the reason for the subtle difference between the two prints? Oh, well, it's because they're a set, you see. No, I don't. The pair of photographs is meant to be used as a stereoscope. Everyone in London is raving about them at the moment. Oh, okay. Ah, it's stereoscope. Why do I feel as though I've heard that word before recently? Because we talked to Sholmes about it. Oh, yes, that's what Mr. Sholmes showed us yesterday. Maybe we should try using it. You see, there it is, just over there. Oh, yes, of course, that magical machine that makes pictures look almost real enough to touch. Well, let's do that. Let's grab that then. <laughs> well, actually, it's quite possible to see the same depth in pictures even without one of those contraptions. What? Really? Do you know how a pair of flat photographic prints can appear to have any depth in the first place? No, I have no idea. Yeah, I don't either. Can you tell us? Oh, wonderful! Then I'll be able to tell you! Oh, I'm, so, I'm glad you're glad. She's over the moon. Bless her. Bless her soul. Bless you. Should we let her explain, though? We really need to carry on the investigating scene. I, for one, simply have to know. Oh, thanks. That's great. Okay. Ah, oh, Jesus. Please. I just want to investigate. Have you ever considered Runo? How are I see depths in the world around us? Well, I just open them and it works. But the reason it worked is because we have two eyes. Two eyes. Shocking. If you try closing one eye at a time, I think you'll see straight away. What you see with your left eye and what you see with your right eye are like slightly different. Are ever so slightly different, you get a different view with each eye. Yeah, because of the fact that they're both set in different areas. So I, my right eye can see more of the side of something than my left eye. Did everybody close their eyes when I said your left eye and right eye? I hope you did. Yes, the position of objects seems to shift slightly. Exactly, and in your head, your brain uses that shift to estimate the depth as it merges the two views into one. Now well, that is true. That's how we have depth of field. Well, we're like, ah, this is very close, but that's far away, and that's even further away. Huh, my brain really is amazing, isn't it? It does so much without telling you. Oh, I think I see. So the pair of photographs consists of a left eye and a right eye view. Is that right? Oh, well done, Susie. You're so quick. So if you can persuade your brain to merge the two pictures together in your head, you'd be able to see depth in these prints. Yes, Runo, you're beginning to understand. The stereoscope's function is to act as your brain and allow you to ju do just that. Yes, but uh, as long as you have two images, two eyes, and one brain, you can actually do it yourself without needing a stereoscope at all. You can, really. How do you see this? Let's try it. Let's see if you can view this pair of prints without the help of a stereoscope. Oh, yes, I'm dying to have a go. Zidalosan really loves this kind of thing, yes. You need to be able to cross your eyes. That's the main thing. Can you both do that? Cross my eyes? I, I think I can. Watch me and see if you can copy. Ah, God, no! <laughs> it's awful! Oh, please! <laughs> I don't like watching it happen. Make your eyes do this. All right, let me try. 
Is this... Are you ready, Mr. Naruhodo? It, it was this... Ah! It, it, did they just want a reason to make everybody cross their eyes? Is that... Is that it? There. How is that? You guys both look ridiculous. <laughs> Wonderful. Now it's your turn, Runo. The trick is to concentrate on looking at the bridge of your nose with both eyes at the same... Thanks. I know how to cross my eyes. I've been a child once. Not exactly an easy task when two people are staring at you cross-eyed. Yeah. All right, that's enough practice. Now let's try looking at the prints. That one. Start by staring at one print and then slowly crossing your eyes. Ah! You should see two overlapping images. Oh, God. Like this, yeah. You try it now, Runo. Just gonna have to give it a try, I suppose. Yeah. And the print split into two images for you? Now the next step. So put the pair of prints side by side like this and then try crossing your eyes again. The print should slowly merge together until, oh God, is that? No, oh. they form a new single image in the center. Oh yes, <laughs> Mr. Naruhodo works. I can see in the middle now. That's cool. It's so real, I can look at it all day, please. Why did you have to flash cut to just cross-eyed Cesato? I wouldn't advise that. Your eyes might start to hurt. Your turn, Runo. Pretend you're looking through the two pictures and slowly cross your eyes. Keep adjusting the position of your eyes until the two images overlap exactly in the middle. I don't know why you my eyes so, so far away. Like this, is it? Like, my brain is just like, that's dumb. Uh, uh, I can't stare too long because I've got like this fan on me too. It'd probably be better if I had it like him because I can, you can cross your eyes a lot easier like on something close. Maybe if I had my switch up to my face. But then you guys wouldn't be able to see me. Or the screen. There, you managed it. So now you know how stereoscopic images work. That's cool. That was 10 minutes of my life. And it was, it was really extraordinary. Yes, it is. It's great. Anyway, so what do you think of the stereoscopic prints then, Runo? They're certainly amazing, but it isn't easy to get the knack of viewing them properly. Yeah. No, some people find it easier than others. But that's why contraptions like this exist, for people who find it tricky. Oh, I recognize that. Yeah, it's... We saw that over there yesterday, didn't we? It's still right there. If I remember correctly, you press this little knob here and it like opens, yeah. Then set the pair of photographs in this stand in the back and... It's still amazing, even though I know roughly how it works now. Well, London seems to agree with you. Stereoscopes are very popular at the moment. You can find one of these folding contraptions in lots of households in the capital currently. If these little machines are so affordable, uh, surely there's no need to go around staring cross-eyed at pictures like you hate them. Well, I wouldn't say like you hate them. Yeah, bro. But it's much more satisfying to be able to see the effect with your own eyes. Well, I think so in any case. Stereoscopic pictures. Never heard of them until yesterday. Certainly learned a lot about them, but I wonder if it's knowledge that I'll ever actually need. The second white cat photograph has been entered into the court record. Okay, well, I guess I'll maybe I'll examine it because, like, there's blood. How did nobody notice the bloody... Frickin' fingerprint. That's blood! Look, this dark red smear appears to have been made by somebody's finger. Do you think it could be blood? Do you see any red marks as blood iris? It's a bit morbid, I think. What are you talking Shut up, man! It's almost certainly blood, isn't it? Shh, 10 year olds today. But it is! Like, it's literally. Why is. If it's not blood, then maybe it's wine? He seems pretty convinced it's not blood. 
This is the ticket that Gina brought in here yesterday. I entrusted to her by Mr. McGilded two months earlier. Article deposited one gentleman's over. The other redemption taker's pocket coat. Small box deposited two days before the omnibus incident. Does this have anything to do with all of this? It really does look like Waga High. It's exactly the same as the first photograph at a glance. Suppose that's what's so compelling. Uh, oh. Old picture, they could have another go. Yeah, no. So I need to cross my. It's such a hard thing to do. Okay, yeah, go. Okay. Okay, that didn't really give me any relevant stuff. So already checked the door. Wait, I thought I checked this area. Are we checking it again? It's enormous, isn't it? Must be an awful lot of work to keep track of all these hundreds of items in pawn. Too much to think about. Better just sell it all and have a clear head if you ask me. Clearly, Mr. Windybank is very careful when it came or was very careful when it came to the articles in his care. I was like, can't say is. The man is dead. Okay, cool. So that was new, I guess. Um, I guess police are scouring every inch of this place by the look of it. Instructions in the yard are to examine every article in the shop and every ledger and book of accounts. Every article? But, but that's a ridiculous amount of work, surely. We've been hard at it since the shop was declared a crime scene in the early hours. We're sifting through all the shifts at least, but we'll be working through the night, that's for sure. Even then, we'll barely have scratched the surface. Prime at a pawnbroker. This must be every policeman's worst nightmare. Every copper's worst nightmare, you know, a crime in the pawnbrokers. Wow, thanks for... Thanks. Glad. What should we... Oops, there's... Uh, no, I can't... Thanks. These shelves are where the pawnbroker puts articles that have been forfeited on display for customers to buy. It's really strange miscel miscellany. Miss miscellany. Oh. Miss ah god, I don't know how to oh. Why I know what that word means. Like miscellaneous. Miscellany. I think it's just miscellany. There we go. Sorry everybody, I forgot how to talk for a second. I mean, who would buy this horse statue, for example? Well, sometimes you can find some real treasure among all the junk, you know. Are you all right, Runo? Oh, it's just, well, it looks like a collection of useless junk as a whole, but when you pick out individual things, you can't help wishing you own them, even that horse statue. That's exactly how the pawnbroker works. They're very clever. It is. Ugh. Sometimes worse. So this is the big stereoscope thing. This is that strange contraption that lets you see pictures of things in the right in front of your eyes. It makes you think. When Mr. Shomps gleefully showed it to us yesterday, we were blissfully unaware that any of this was about to happen. I mean, yeah, that's how that works. I'm fairly sure this contraption was here yesterday as well. Here we are. Though I'm not confident I can get it closed again. Oh, yes, that's a folding stereoscope. Really, this is a stereoscope. Mr. Shom showed us a picture yesterday where you're supposed to be able to see in three dimensions. But for that, he used a great big contraption over there. Oh, well. That one's for use in public houses and places like that. It contains a carousel with all sorts of pictures inside. But this little thing is much simpler designed for use at home. There's a special shop selling prints so you can use in them. I have a little collection myself. I wonder if I can make money out of these in Japan. It would be keeping my toilet sparkling clean anyway. Okay. Well... Wait, d no, don't, uh, don't tell me. Do I literally have to move to the back? Ah, no, I do have to move to the storeroom. Mother the whole time. God damn it. Well, I had to pick up that thing anyway. Why can't you just walk through the door when I click on it? Okay, the storeroom. Ah, the blood. That's blood, though. Poor Iris, she's clammed up completely. Iris is bound to find this difficult. After all, Mr. Windybank's life was taken in this very room only last night. Hmm. Yeah? Oh, Gregson. Ah! Uh, yes? Wait, 
Uh, Inspector. What is it now, sunshine? You took one look at me and tried to run away. You think a Scotland Yard inspector would run away from some jumped up little defense lawyer, do you? Actually, yes. I just, well, uh, I've never seen her ladyship looking like that before as a thing. I didn't know what to say to her. So you weren't running away from me, you were running away from the 10 year old. I'm afraid this is all a little much for young Iris. Some gentle reassurance might go a long way, perhaps, Inspector. Eh? Uh, um, ahem. <clears throat> don't, um, don't trouble yourself unduly, your ladyship. I mean, at least you're not dead, are you? <laughs> wow. I don't think that went very well. Why? <laughs> because it was terrible, and you shouldn't say that to anybody in the middle of a crime scene. Look, I'm in the middle of an investigation, Sunshine, and I told you not to get under my feet. This guy's got the funnies, he does. He got them jokes. And we have investigating to do ourselves. Yes, I'd like to hear more of what the socially inept inspector has to say. Oh, Hurley. An inquirer had it into how Mr. Shulm's operation is going. Well, before I do that, I'm going to examine all this stuff. I kind of know the plot. Please have marked the position of the body with a chalk line. Poor Mr. Windybank, he was a nice old man. Well, he was shot just once through the heart. And you're to blame. You give love a bad name, sorry. Most likely, the fellow died instantly. He wouldn't have felt a thing. That makes me feel better, I think. Aha! Uh -huh. I may well be able to help with that. What? There's nothing like the sight of blood to get the blood pumping, is there, Runo? What? Ugh, I have a feeling I'm not as bloody-minded as you, Iris. I'm afraid the sight of blood makes my blood run cold. There you have it, you see, when it comes to blood, we're all different types. Yes, what a scientific observation. Ah, they all have jokes today. So you need this. Oh no, what is that scary looking thing? It's a butt plug. Hmm, Hurley and I haven't actually come up with a name for it yet. But as soon as you see it in action, you'll understand what it does. Definitely a butt plug. No! Watch. Oh. Oh no, it's, uh... Uh... Oh, the color of the blood stain has changed. There, does it make sense now? No, yes, I think I'm starting to understand. Good, it works on the principle that different people have different types of blood, you see. Yes, how wonderful. The chemical it fires combines with the blood and makes it change color. So you can identify whose blood it is that you're looking at in a flash. What? Oh, what a fabulous invention, Iris. Isn't it? Isn't it? I bet Ginny would say it's bleeding great. Oh. So whose blood are we looking at then? This must be Mr. Windybank's blood. Yes, this is where he was shot, so can't be any question of that. This could turn out to be a very valuable clue, so we simply must make note of it. The blood analysis has been entered into the court record. A sample of blood analyzed with a special chemical indicator developed by Mr. Sholmes. Different people's blood turns different colors. Let's keep testing and adding the results of any other blood analysis on the portfolio. As long as I have reagents left, sure. Actually, there's a stain on the back of that one photograph, isn't there? And you said you're morbid for thinking it's blood. Rinosuke, and now you're all like, oh, maybe we should test it on the blood. It was blood the whole time. You dumb bastard. Time to look at the photograph too. Check the blood, please. Mr. Naruhodo, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's something rather troubling here. I have noticed. Red smear, you mean? Yes, it looks like blood, doesn't it? Now you say it looks like blood. What a dick. I wonder if Suzada-san had picked up on that. Well, in that case, yes, we need Iris. We should show her this to her before we forget. Okay, wait, yeah. 
Okay, so, oh, present it to her. Um, wait, where's Iris? Do I really have to go to the other thing? Whatever, I'm gonna look at the game. This, this is a revolver, uh, a real one. And quite, quite possibly the murder weapon used to take Mr. Windbeak's life. What's the matter, Susie? You and Runo look like you're about to faint. Well, it's just that uh, I've rarely seen a gun in the flesh. And I've had issues with guns in the past. Oh, what are you, racist? But anyway, we saw Mr. Windybink with this yesterday, didn't we? Yeah, isn't that his own gun? Yeah, that's his gun. That gun, that gun, I forgot about that. You don't have to do that, sir. You don't got it, you don't got it. it must be the same gun. And last night, when I looked through the hole, yeah, that was the gun I saw in Gina's hand. But it, no, no, it was planted, of course it was planted. Mr. Windybank told us he only ever had a single bullet loaded in his revolver, didn't he? Well, it's empty now. The one and only bullet he had in the gun has been fired. So we can be fairly certain that a single shot was fired from this revolver. Go. Cool. Hey, the box! Was that the small box? Out of all the articles in the storeroom, this is the only thing that shows any sign of being ransacked. Ah! What is it, Iris? That's... That's the box file my manuscript was being kept in. Oh. Oh. Iris's unpublished story, The Hound of the Baskervilles. Surely that's not what all this. I mean, it would be worth a lot. Sorry, Iris, but if you ask me, he sold it without telling you. Well, he didn't. We must check inside the box at once. Yes. Ah! It was there! Iris' story was there! Really, it was. Well, that's good news, isn't it, Iris? Um, yes. I mean, of course, I believed Hurley when he said he deposited it here, but still, it's a relief to actually see it. Really, because that's not a very well-hidden frown. Iris' manuscript has been entered into the court record. A long, unpublished story that Mr. Sholmes deposited the pawnbroker of the victim, Mr. Windybag, and his entire the Hound of the Basket. Oof. Is anything sticking out of it? I can't find anything out of place. Hound of the Baskervilles. How did you know that? How did suzaru san know about the exact title of this unpublished story? I suppose I have to wait until she's ready to explain it to me. I'm so sorry. Well, I guess that's all that there is. It's just a big old stack of paper. What's over here? Look at all these articles that have been deposited. This room is stuffed with them. I can't believe how many there are. Bicycle, a gramophone, a musical instruments, even some enormous paintings, look. Pieces of different people's lives quietly gathering dust in here together. Something very peaceful about the atmosphere in here. Or at least, there would be if not for the chalk outline on the floor and the policemen shuffling around. Not much I can do about that, sunshine. How can you hear my thoughts? Stop it. Okay, I guess that's everything in here. We looked at that. Oh, wait. Had we not looked at it again? Uh, Iris? Don't worry, I'm alright. But we must find the true culprit. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so that should be everything in this room. Uh, so I guess I should talk. I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to talk. There's so much talking. talking for so long. Yeah, I think definitely this leg of the investigation will be the last one for us recorded and streams. So, Inspector, what do you make of the crime scene here? You've got eyes, haven't you? Use them. It's 
what it looks like. Nothing more, nothing less. Iris, could you lend me a hand? So, Gregsy, what do you make of the crime scene here? Oh, yes, your ladyship. Uh, do allow me to humbly explain. Because, well, fish and chips are delicious. I think that's why. Yeah, he... Uh, there, there's fish in the middle. It's actually just like bread. It, the the long, like cylindrical one in the middle. Sorry, hand motions. Um, that actually is breaded fish. And I talked to Arcee and Zunder, and apparently in the south, uh, like in the southern uh, UK, they will have like fish and chips in that style, like around the the um, the cities and all that. I'm like, damn, I want some of that shit. That sounds amazing. Yeah, talk heavy game, it takes a lot. Especially this, where there's a lot of different voices, there's just a lot of drama and a lot going on. Uh, last night, shortly after the hour, one o'clock in the morning, Scotland Yard, police attended the scene. The one and only door to the storeroom was found locked from the inside. It was locked from the inside. The lock appears to be broken now, though. Is that the police officer's doing? Quite right, ma'am, quite right. We took the liberty of smashing the door in. As humbly as possible. Oh, as you can see, the victim was discovered prostrate on the floor, um, thus was. And next to the aforementioned body, we discovered the vile gotcha child. Are you talking about Ginny? She's my friend, you know, Inspector. Miss Lestrade, the hatless girl, was curled up on the floor, dead to the world. He done it, yeah. Still alive, you know. Yes, when I saw her, she appeared to be unconscious. And I'm afraid to say that she had the gun that was used in her hand. No! Presumably it's that gun still down there on the ground, or on the floor now. Corrupt police, I know, can't believe it. You bribe him with some fish and chips and he, he'll do anything for you. In her pocket, we found the key to the door as well. What, the key to the storeroom? Do you say the storeroom had been locked from the inside, Inspector? Correct. All of which leaves her leadership's friend in something of a sticky situation, I'm afraid. Obviously, my personal opinion is that uh, it's all some sort of misunderstanding. Of course it is, Inspector. Of course it is. The Shones' is operation. Tell me. Rexy, do you know anything about Hurley? Is the operation finished? Is Hurley all right? Is he? Um, well, er, um, the thing is, um, no mince words, Inspector, please. You don't mean to say that Mr. Sholmes is, is. Also, you know, I should have asked this the entire time. Is the volume level, like, for the game and for me all right? I realized after I butzed around with audio, I wasn't sure about this microphone. I know my other microphone is fine. But, um, I'm, I'm guessing you guys would have told me if I was too quiet or something. You don't mean to say that Mr. Sholmes is, is... No, 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 no. The operation is done and dusted. Perfect. Uh, it's just that, well, uh... Out with it! Yes, ma'am. They use something called a general anesthetic. It's the latest thing. It renders the whole body insensitive. The whole body? Anesthetized? Is that even possible? Yeah, a lot of things are possible. It means the operation can be completed while the patient is fast asleep. Goodness, in the Empire of Japan, we can just manage to provide laughing gas for a tooth extractor. Yeah. The trouble is, the latest thing isn't always the greatest thing if you follow my meaning. They couldn't get the medication to work at first, so it took hours for him to not offer it, so I hear. Yeah, and it's the, I feel like that's probably something that they did as well, yeah. Get the cops, yeah. And now that the op's finished, they, uh, they can't get him to wake up, apparently. Oh, my. No one knows if it's the anesthetic or in his system or if the book's just plain exhausted. I mean, he was awake all night. But anyway, all they can do is stand back and watch until he comes around again. Hurley, the moment he opens his eyes, your ladyship, I swear I shall get word to you. A surprise. Even in matters of life and death, Mr. Sholmes has to do things his way. Okay, well, uh, we're gonna move to the main shop, and they were gonna present her with the thing. So, 
presented. Oh, I don't I, I forgot that wasn't the presenty button. I pressed the look at the button. Oh, that looks like blood. I'm waiting for it to be like, oh, that's kind of morbid, isn't it? I would say it's from a gloved finger. Almost certainly a glove made of leather. Well, don't worry, Runo. You can leave the rest to me. That blood is purple? Look at that. Yes, that's a color we haven't seen before, isn't it? We simply must add it to the portfolio of blood samples. It could be an important clue. Although, it would be nice to find out whose blood these different colors correspond to at some point. Well, this particular stain of blood. Oh, you have an idea, haven't you? Do you know whose blood this is? I think I do. Yes, I have an idea of whose blood it is. Not from the color it turned, but with a little deduction. That's right, I think it's clear. Iris, do you know as well? You, you first, Runo. Who do you think it belongs to? I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm right. All right, I believe that this blood, this is the blood of... It is thrice fired because he gave it thrice fired Mason because he was he had the gloves on and he stabbed yeah. You don't sound very sure of yourself the way you trailed off there. Well, it was two months ago now in that case, and of course I've never met the victim, so I'm struggling to remember his name. He was definitely thrice fired though. The victim of the omnibus case, yeah, because if he had that, if he gave that to him, it would have had blood on it. Um. Because of the fact, yeah. His name was indeed Thrice Fired Mason. But that would mean that this blood stain was left on the ticket two months ago. Yes, I think it was. Gina brought this ticket here to Windy Banks yesterday. I'm suggesting that the blood stain was already on at that time. So it's a smear of blood from the time that Mr. Mason was killed two months ago. Yeah. Something else is coming back to me now. Mr. McGilded was also wearing leather gloves that night. Exactly, that's what I was thinking. Like, he obviously had blood on his hands. If he was the one who stabbed him. Uh, yeah, gloves, yep. Certainly looks like a leather glove thumbprint, this Mark. We know that Mr. McGilded had no injuries at the time anywhere on his body, from which we can conclude that any blood on the glove belonged to the victim, Mr. Mason. Mr. Naruhoto, you sound like, you sound just like Mr. Sholmes, except you're right the first time. Minus the quirky slip-ups, I hope, yeah. Yes, I think you're right, Runo. Very well, let's make a note of this. Okay, the blood on it has been identified as Mr. Mason. Yay, we have more blood. And I think that's it for now. So let's try going and seeing Shelm. There's nothing here. Never mind. Let's not see Shelm. Okay, let's go back this way. Present that to him. He's probably gonna be like, I don't want to show that. Inspector Gregson, could you give me your opinion about this, do you think? We don't tend to share sunshine, not with the general public. Ugh. In that case, Gregson, how about some herbal tea? Oh, yeah, this is the thing. This is the thing. He's just gonna drink all her tea. The man who drank all of the little girl's tea. He really did do it. I feel 
like I looked at everything. Unless there was something I missed in the main shop. I looked in the chest. Do you have them where you come from, Runo? Yes, but I've never seen one as large as this in Japan. Oh, well, this will be a treat. Shall we have a listen? Wait, isn't that that tune? What do you think? Isn't it a pretty sound? A beautiful sound, yes, but uh, it's a little hard to enjoy when all the police in the room are giving you fierce looks. Never mind that. If any of them say anything, I'll tell Gregsy to have a word. Iris Wilson, superintendent of Scotland Yard. Okay, well, we did the music. Poppers everywhere. Oh, maybe this one in particular? Oh, I just noticed there's blood all over that. This officer's been staring intently at the wall since before we came in here. Shh, keep it down. Oh, sorry. There's a major clue just here. Really? Then we must tell Gregsy at once. As soon as I report it, that'll be it. I'll be stuck here even longer. Stuck here? What do you mean? I haven't been home in two days already. I need another constable to relieve me and take over this ship. Ugh. I really have a tough time in the British police. That doesn't stop us investigating, though, does it? No, I suppose not. I'm fairly certain there's a calendar he's peering at. That's covered in blood. Ah, look here. Oh, that's a bullet. Wait, so... So he was shot and then dragged in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a bullet hole. And I can see the bullet is still lodged in the wall. Presumably, Mr. Windybank was practicing with his revolver in his spare time. That's stupid. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Ah, well, uh, that's dumb. Mr. Sholmes likes to practice in his drawing room whenever he can. He's very patriotic like that. Sorry. It's all there in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, you know. Isn't that right, Iris? Uh, did I write something like that? Partly in jest, perhaps. <gasps> in jest? Well, he doesn't do it often. It's quite a dangerous pastime. He doesn't do it often. He, he shouldn't do it even once. Forget about that for now, Runo. Let's examine this bullet. Is that around the bullet hole? Is it blood? Hmm, suspicious red stain on the calendar. Aha, uh -huh, this is where I come in. Oh, right. The blood changes to the same color as the sample from the storeroom. Well, no, that's Mr. Windybank's blood. Exactly. Here we go, then. Which would explain why he got shot in the back. Because at exactly midnight, it's green. Who the hell has green? Huh? That's a different color. Okay, but then somebody's blood is on there. Somebody else get shot? But if he was going to like change the um the date on the calendar, that would explain why he got shot in the back. Because if the person knew exactly what he was gonna do, killed him, dragged him to the back. completely different to the color that Mr. Windybank's blood turned in the analysis. Just goes to show, things don't always go according to plan, do they? Nevertheless, we must add this sample to the results of the other blood analysis. Well, but I don't know who has green blood. Um, oh wait, maybe green blood is our boy. Sholmes, green blood, it just seems wrong somehow. Oh, there are all sorts of colors. There's pretty pinks and purples too, you know. Like I said, everyone's blood is different. I wonder what color my blood would turn out. Actually, I, I don't want to know. Are you sure? Okay, what else could there be? Maybe I need to show him the... Well, 
Okay, the calendar doesn't show up. The way you can identify different differences in people's blood like this is amazing. You really are a genius, Iris. I know, I am. Early on our put our minds to it, we could really shake up Britain's chemists and alchemists. And you could shake up Japan's lawyers and judges, couldn't you, Mr. Naruhodo? Oh, for sure, even if I didn't intend to. Okay, well, that was not what I was going for. thing here. Okay. Let's try the hospital again. Nope. Prison? Oh, it's different. Dina doesn't appear to be here. I believe she must be in questioning at the moment. Oh, but wait a minute. What is it, Iris? Well, if you examine the scene here carefully, there's another possibility, isn't there? Ginny could have slipped the key from the jailer when he wasn't looking in escape. Oh my. What? Why would she do something like that? It would only make her situation worse. Calm down, Runo. I was only joking, of course. Oh. Ugh, you can't be worried there. Another great deduction. Yes, it must be your way with words, Iris. You're so wonderfully persuasive. Perhaps you don't fully understand the weight your words carry. Oh dear, I'm sorry. I suppose a lighthearted great detective is a contradiction in terms. Well, in the same situation, I'm sure Mr. Sholmes would have just thrown his head back and guffawed. I'm not entirely sure that's helpful, Mr. Narahodo. Well, anyway, it looks like we won't be able to talk to Gina for a while. We should try to make progress with our investigation. I am. Uh, what else? What else is there? Maybe there's something going on at Baker Street. Still a Scotland Yard carriage outside of Windy Banks. Never imagined we'd be investigating a case so close to home. Poor Irish, she's very upset by all of this. Sorry, I was there. I should have done more. None of this is your fault, Runo, so please don't apologize. But I, it's the criminals who are to blame for this. So let's investigate and work out how to catch them. You're right. Okay, well... There's home. Okay, I'm like, what the fuck do you want me to do again? What if there's something at home? No. What if there's something in the attic? Nope. What the? What do they want me to do? What else is there in the store? I don't know if I'm supposed to present something. Dude, I already talked to you about it. Is that what I think it is? Your leadership's latest? Yes, my latest story. It's called The Hound of Baskerville. Of the Baskerville. Uh, most fascinating title, your ladyship. Fascinating! And, um, I don't suppose, uh, would there be any mention of myself in the title this time? Good question. I can't really remember. I see, I see. Well, why would you, your ladyship? I'll just await its publication with eager anticipation. You didn't worry, Inspector. I'm sure if you do appear, you won't be doing anything particularly remarkable. You're looking to be arrested, Sunshine. I didn't mean it like that, and even if I did, you wouldn't have it bitten her ladyship's head off, would you? Probably not. Okay, I'm I'm happy. It's 
really not giving me anything. Like, I've already looked at everything. I've identified a few different types of blood. I don't see anything else in here to mess with. He has no other topics of conversation. If I go anywhere else, nothing. Here then. A redemption ticket for an alternate deposit here, is it? But I don't know how I know that actually, or how to present that specific one. Unless it's just like, just try everything. Looks like someone ran up in the office stationery and wrote the ticket on whatever paper was on it. And yes, this is the ticket from the Gilded's overcoat. One that our little diver turned up with yesterday. But actually, no, it's not. Really? You know better than me, do you? No, 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 I, I didn't mean to, um, Runo's right, Gregsy. It isn't the same ticket. Of course it isn't. Of course it isn't. I never doubted your leadership. Uh, so what's all this about then, if I might be so bold as to ask? This is a second ticket. A uh, second one? It seems that Mr. McGill did in fact had another article in storage here at Windy Banks. Is that right? I think we need to discuss this further with the inspector, Mr. Narahodo. Oh, good, because he's never... Uh, this is so easy to talk to. I don't want to talk to you. I just want to finish this... Uh, I don't want to finish investigating. This ticket was in one of the pockets of Mr. McGilded's overcoat. Eh? You, you mean to tell me? Yes, there was more than just the music box disc, it seems. Should have insisted on the lads taking it back to the yard and examining it properly. Well, according to the details on this ticket, Mr. McGill did deposited another article here with Mr. Windybank. Yes, I can see it written here. A small box, was it? Do you have any idea where it is, Gregsy? Any idea at all? It's another article belonging to Mr. McGill did. It could be another important clue. Well, um, yes, uh, I suppose it would be. Please stop looking at me with those big turquoise eyes full of hope and expectation. It's too much pressure. I'll lose my marbles. I will. I'll go barking. That's... I don't think you should say that to a child. This is no time for dog impressions, Inspector. That's enough sauce from you, sunshine. There is one thing that springs to mind. Uh, according to this ticket, the redemption deadline's already passed, hasn't it? Thank you for the stretch. Oh, yes, of course. Articles are only held for two months. Uh, so the small box will no longer be in here, then. That's right, it's been forfeited. Which means it could be on the shelves in front of the shop where the forfeited items are offered for sale. Yes, the shelves on the front. We must search them at once. You're wasting your time. Oh? There are dozens of little boxes out there. Hundreds even. We can't possibly know which one of them might be the gilded. That information's not written in the ledger. Ugh. Well, I think we should at least have a look, just in case. Of course, your ladyship. Of course. Very sensible there, I'm sure. It's getting old. Yeah, it's an old man time he did it. Dong, dong, dong. That's a lot. 
Is this game not safe for work? Ah! I nearly jumped out of my skin there. How could Mr. Windybank uh, set, all the, um, set such a wicked trap? Yeah, I don't think he did. I doubt he set it out to scare anyone. That's just a lot of clocks. Is that really the time? I think perhaps we should pay Gina another visit soon. Oh? Our trial is tomorrow. We must establish whether or not you will be defending her. I think we should ask her one more time. She may have changed her mind. I thought she already said that I was. Don't you remember, Runo? You told her she could rip up the representation papers if she didn't want you to be her lawyer. Really? Did I say that? Yes, you did. You dumb piece of crap. The deadline for submitting the paperwork is fast approaching. In that case, we'd better hurry back to the prison and talk to Gina again. To the prison. Okay, the, the first time I was like, hey, maybe you should do this. So what about, like, freaking Herlock? Am I alive? 5.41 p.m. Hi again. Ah, Gina, good. You're back. Oh! Uh, oh. The police must have finished questioning her then. Oh, how was it, Ginny? Was it awful? Eh? Oh. Didn't bother me. Thank you for the papers you signed before. Uh, it meant we were able to investigate at Windy Banks. Oh, right. <sighs> Come on. Don't you want to know how we got on? We've been ever so busy. What's the point in asking? Won't change what everyone's saying that I did it. That's not... Gina, we came to ask for your final decision. Eh? O what decision? About tomorrow's trial. Will you let me defend you or not? <gasps> I must submit the paperwork now if you'd like Mr. Naruhodo to represent you. Right, I see. She's really lost her fight all of a sudden. But I know what th that feels like. The worry is just so hard to bear. Right then, blimey, give it a rest with them eyes, Iris. So come on then, fill us in. Who done it? Unfortunately, we don't know that yet. You don't say. We don't know yet, Gina. But Mr. Naruhodo and all of us know that you are innocent of this crime. And while we haven't yet managed to work out who the real culprit is, there are a number of interesting facts that we have managed to establish. Oh, yeah? Like what? Well, for example, the reason for you being there in the first place. I think I know now why you broke into Windy Banks that night. Looks like I'm going to have to take some evidence that clearly reveals the reason. And thrust it in Gina's face! You shouldn't just... You shouldn't just thrust thing in, things in women's faces. Not without asking first. Or I could present it to her calmly, I suppose. Yeah, do that, bro. Avachi! We found this in Mr. Windybank's storeroom. The manuscript of Iris's latest story. Ah! Oh, right. Well, that's good then. Curiously, the storeroom at Windybank's showed no sign of being ransacked for items of value or the like. With one exception. The box file that housed this manuscript. It was you, wasn't it, Gina? Who broke and opened the box containing the manuscript last night. Eh? You were determined to find out whether or not the Hound of the Baskervilles was really there. That's the real reason you broke into the storeroom last night, isn't it? Ah! Why don't you tell us what happened, please? Okay, well first I'll ask that. We already have the representation papers and other documents we need. All we have to do is hand them to the court. That is, if you'll allow me to represent you in court tomorrow. 
Nah, don't bother. Chinny? Rip them up and chuck them, would ya? Them representation papers or whatever they're called. This cell ain't fancy enough to have a bin. So, what will you do in court tomorrow? I'll be fine on my own. I don't think you will be. Look, it don't matter. What's going to happen is going to happen. This is one stubborn pickpocket. Yeah, but what about the manuscript? All right, yes, this Baskerville story. It's the latest Sholmes adventure, right? It ain't been printed yet. So I figured it's gotta be worth a fair few pieces of silver, right? Oh yes, at least 5,000 pounds. What? So you intended to sell Iris' manuscript, did you? No, Jitty, how could you? What? Wait, no, no, hang on. Of course I weren't gonna sell it. All I wanted to do was find out if the mantle strip, whatever you call it, really was there. That's the only reason why I I wasn't the place. For Iris' sake, isn't that right? Ah, uh, we knew why you'd done it from the start, Gina. Of course we did. But I knew you wouldn't do anything mean like that, Jenny. I just knew it. Well, um, uh, I think I deserve a kiss for that deception. When I saw the manuscript in the storeroom, it reminded me of what you said the night before. Okay, grown ups do a lot worse than that. They're all liars. But uh, I'm telling you, the manuscript ain't there. And I'm gonna check it out. Okay. Flashback over. Oh, Ginny, that was so sweet of you. All right, all right. I'll tell you why I did it. Just stop looking at me like that, Iris. Reason for break again. Because of the thrill. It weren't because of Iris. That's not why I did it. I just wanted to know the truth. That's all. You wanted to know if Mr. Sholmes was being honest, if he'd really deposited the manuscript at Windybanks. It's like I told you the night before. I never had a father. But Iris's lot ain't like mine. She's got her dad, only she can't see him. He's dead. And I reckon that's gotta be harder. That's why she writes her stories. They're about her dad, really. That's what it sounded like to me, anyway, last night when I was listening to what you were saying. Stories about daddy? Please don't take that out of context. You mean they're not the adventures of a great detective so much as the adventures of a great detective and his trusty partner? Well, that's how I see it, yeah. You're so thoughtful and so kind, Ginny. Yes, and we never thought any differently, did we? Look, give it a rest, will ya? I ate this chummy nonsense, do you hear? I ate it. I don't trust no one, right? That's how I work. Because if you don't trust no one, no one can let you down. So leave me alone. Go on, Scarper. You don't mean that, do you? I hadn't noticed until now, but it's unmistakable. Right there, on both sleeves of that overcoat, is that just a bunch of blood? Are some very suspicious red stains. <gasps> the strawberry jam. What? Oh, oh, why are you looking at me like that? I think it might be worth presenting some of our other findings in that area to Gina now. Da, 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 da. Time to present the f blood. Those stains on the sleeves of your new coat, Gina. They're blood, aren't they? Not that I know whose blood yet. What? B -b blood, Mr. Narahodo. You don't appear to have any obvious wounds yourself, though. So could it be blood that spattered from Mr. Windybank when he was shot last night? Let's not beat around the bush here. This trusty friend of mine will get results much faster than anything else. Eh? Take it easy, Iris. Don't move, Jenny. I'm going to shoot. Oh, not that she doesn't already have PTSD. 
What color are the sleeves? Pur oh, purple. Oh my God. That is the dead man's jacket? Oh. Oh my. Because his blood was per- yeah. Oh boy, you're wearing the dead man jacket. Oh my. What the? Forget the sleeves. The whole coat is covered in blood. Of course. The black color of the fabric was masking the stains. That's why we haven't seen them until now. And the blood is reacting with the chemical to turn a purple color, which matches one of the samples we've already collected perfectly. Yes, now let's see. Who had the purple blood? Aha, uh -huh, yes, it was the brickmaker, Mr. Mason, the victim of the murder case two months ago. I knew it. What? What are you all on about? The victim? Oh, what do you mean? It's a rather uncomfortable situation, Mr. Naderhodo, but I think this makes things quite clear now. It means that the omnibus case is finally solved. The truth about who really murdered the brickmaker, Mr. Mason, is revealed. Oi! Would someone explain what's going on? Stop telling me half a story. Truth of the omnibus case, yep. We can now see that the victim's blood is all over Mr. McGilded's overcoat. But in the trial two months ago, the defendant said this in his testimony. Uh, yeah, he, he helped him, and you're giving the man a hand with your bloody gloves. But if you look at this overcoat now, it's clear these stains couldn't have arisen from McGilded trying to pull the victim to his feet. No, if that is what really had happened, the blood wouldn't have splashed all over the front of the coat. The only explanation for this pattern of blood is that it splattered over McGilded's coat when he stabbed the victim in the stomach. I knew that man was crooked. I tried to run away from the truth for long enough, but there's no escaping it now. The true culprit in this case, Mr. Mason's killer, is Ma was Magnus McGilded. Well, I got, I guess he got swift justice. Mr. Naruhodo, that horrible case is solved at last. And I helped the man walk free from that trial. I used all that twisted testimony, all the sham evidence to prove his innocence. How could I have let that happen? Runo, did you believe him though? Did you believe Mr. McGilded was innocent? I believed, or rather I think I was trying to believe I wanted to, because believing in those you represent in court is a defense lawyer's greatest weapon. A weapon? A lawyer's weapon. Oh my god. Just please tell me. <clears throat> Before we came to Great Britain, a great friend of mine taught me a valuable lesson. You mean Kazuma sama? Oh god. Okay. Uh, we're only human. You have to believe. Unwavering belief in your clients is your greatest weapon. That's what we got out of that. What's funny, Gina? Or sounds like this empire of Japan you come from, everyone must be soft. Well, come on. Look at the mess it's got you into believing that walk trotter. Yes, I inadvertently helped a murderer walk free. Well, at least you've learned your lesson now, eh? Believing in people's never worth it. Someone always stabs you in the back in the end. Soon as you let down your guards, you've had it. Take a leaf out of my book. Believe no one, get hurt by no one. Gina, may I ask you something? 
What? I'd like to make absolutely sure. What would you like us to do with these representation papers for tomorrow's trial? How many times do I have to say it? Rip them up and chuck them away. Are you really sure that's what you want? I bet that's what he wants all of. And all of now, Mr. I'm a Believer Lawyer over there. Don't forget it was me in that trial two months ago. I led everyone up the garden path, didn't I? Yeah, but you didn't have a choice. Gina, shut up. And you're telling me you can believe me after that? Not likely. Well, Mr. Naruhodo, lawyer's primary weapon is an unwavering belief in his clients. Ultimately, it comes down to whether or not I feel I can trust Gina after everything that's happened. I can't trust her. Game over. Of course I trust her. She's just being stubborn. Gina, let me say it again. Please allow me to represent you in tomorrow's trial. Eh? Uh, are you half-baked? Not at all. You've not once admitted to committing the crime, have you? What's more, I believe that you're telling me the truth. Seriously, um, Mr. Neruodo. Didn't you hear all of what I said before? I'm a born liar. Fibs just trip off me tongue. And I'm a diver. I pulled the wool over your eyes two months ago and got you into all sorts of trouble. Why would you ever trust me now? I just don't get it. Gina? I do understand why you choose not to put your trust in others, but I assure you there's more to this life than you yet realize. What do you mean? The world we live in is full of people you would do very well to trust. People who won't ever let you down. Eh? It's true that I'm just a student of law and I'm certainly lacking courtroom experience, but I can promise you this. Whatever happens, and until my last breath, I am completely on your side. What? What do you expect me to say to that? Then it's decided. I will take these papers now and carry out the necessary preparations for tomorrow's trial. It would be a shame to throw them away after now after it's been penned with your name so beautifully. <sighs> do what you like. You Eastern lot are... are... I don't know what you are. I don't get you. Finally, Gina's taken herself off to the back of her cell. She never admitted, it, but I hope she's feeling relieved. That turned out all right in the end, I think. Whoever's hiding in there, show yourself at once. Eavesdropping is the height of cowardice. Uh, Miss Suzato? Somebody is there in the shadows. I can sense it. Somebody who wasn't there before. What? Is it my friend, the leg man? Oh, blimey, you're sharp, eh? Oh, it's you. Why are you here? I suppose you were using one of the mystic Japanese arts. <laughs> like the art of stealth that I heard so much about. Wow. If anyone was being stealthy, it was you, Inspector. Rexy! Oh, dear me, I'm terribly, most terribly sorry, your ladyship. I didn't mean to startle you. <laughs> How long have you been listening to our conversation? Good grief! Listening in? No, 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 no. I just got word that there were some visitors who were refusing to leave, even though it was after hours. Yeah, I assure you, ladyship, I only arrived here not uh, this very minute, not a moment earlier. That's all it is. Nothing untoward, nothing at all. After hours? Is it that late already? So then I'll humbly excuse myself now, your ladyship. ta ta to the loo cheerio. All the best. Bye-bye and bye. That's a lot of farewells, and not one of them appropriate for her ladyship. Oh, but I wanted to have a chat. I'm... Sorry, but time is pressing at the minute. Oh, I see. That's a shame. I don't get this emergency at the Supreme Court dealt with sharpish. Lord Strongheart will, well, uh... Emergency? Lord Strongheart? Oh, uh, nothing. Forget I said anything. Anyway, I'm, I'm off. 
All right, Grixie, if you have to, but let's chat soon. Delighted, John. Can't wait, if you please, my pleasure. <laughs> That's a lot of pleasantries, and not one of them sounded sincere. Yep. Grixie's so funny, he says such silly things. Certainly entertaining to see an inspector of the police fawning to a 10-year-old girl. I don't know if I'd say... But anyway, I wonder what this emergency is at the Supreme Court. I must attend to the count court clerk's office now before it closes. Yes, of course. Thank you, Miss Susato. Um, okay. Kindly escort Iris home now, Mr. Naruho, though. I shall meet you there later. And so our investigation came to an end. Suzaro-san went to file the necessary papers for my defense of Gina the following day. And then it hit me. I could no longer suppress the wretched feeling that had been gnawing away at my insides. Tomorrow, Suzaro-san would be leaving, leaving Britain and making her way back to Japan. Yep. Naruhoto-san, it's been a very trying day, hasn't it? I do hope you're not too exhausted. What about you, Suzaro-san? Today has been even more trying for you, I'm sure. Mr. Sholmes was shot before our eyes, Gina was arrested, and all on the back of the news that her father had fallen ill and she must return to Japan at once. I hope your father recovers it. Thank you for your kind words. I wonder why it is that so many thoughts rage in my head like a storm. And yet, I seem unable to find the words to express any of them. I know exactly what you mean. No, you don't! I, I know the inside of my own head! Anyway, I have one final task to complete as your judicial assistant. Once that is done, I shall make preparations for my departure tomorrow. One final task? Um, you mentioned one final task a moment ago. What did you mean? Oh my, I nearly forgot. Please, I want you to have this. What is that? Some huge bundle of documents. It's my notes from the case two months ago. The murder that was committed on the omnibus. The McGilded case. It seems to me that this case of Mr. Windybank's murder, of which Gina is accused, is very much tied up with that omnibus case in ways that are not completely apparent. So I took the liberty of consolidating my writings about the case for you. Everything else she's had to think about. Susanna-san still managed to do this, all neatly laid out for me in her beautiful handwriting. It was my pleasure. I can only hope that it will bolster your case tomorrow for Gina. Thank you so much, Suzada san I'll do my best to use it wisely. You really are the best judicial assistant in the world. Well, that's extremely flattering. But I'm sorry to say... ...that I've been a complete failure. Sorry? I, I didn't quite catch what you said there. Oh! Ignore me, I was just mumbling to myself. Oh. Okay, bye! I don't know, I need to talk. Okay. since we arrived in London, we managed to establish his office. He was finally feeling as though we were settling in. I would be lying if I said I felt no regret. So sorry, Suzato-san. It's just so sudden. I really don't know what to think. Uh... I have no time to gather my thoughts. You no, know, we've only been here a short time, but in my limited experience in the court, I feel I've learned something. Then what would that be? It seems to me there are many facets to people's personalities. 
Acids? And like a jewel, the light plays off them in complex patterns, illuminating their actions and their motives. We see only a small number of the total facets, and what is illuminated is only a part of the whole story. What lies in the shadows? What do those facets we cannot see look like? Perhaps there are some parts we'll never lay eyes on for as long as we live. That's so true. Sometimes I feel as though I'm blind to so much. I keep hoping that one day it'll all become clear. And all those facets will be illuminated and I'll finally understand how everything fits together. Nauru no, Hodo-san. I suppose what matters is that we keep our eyes open and keep moving forward, even if the way sometimes seems dark. It's amazing to think it's been just two months. You've grown so much. Sorry, I've what? Oh no, it was nothing unimportant. Do you know what time you'll be le you will leave London in the morning? Yes, I picked up my ticket earlier. I shall be leaving here at 4 a.m. I see. Well, I'll escort you to the station. Absolutely not. Sorry. I'm sure you realize I couldn't possibly let you do that. You have a very important day ahead of you tomorrow. In this trial. Yes, I know, but every word you utter will have the potential to determine Gina's fate. You must get as much rest as possible. Even though, like me, I'm sure you'll find it hard to sleep. But please, for me, do try. Well, it's getting rather late. I think you should go to bed now, Naruhodo san I must finish packing up my things in my room. Suzada san I, I... I wish you the very best of luck tomorrow. Good night. Wait, there's... there's something I need to say. Ah, don't flip me! Don't... Oh, come on. What... what was that? A secret technique of mine. The Suzano Shutdown. Shutdown? Please, I implore you. If we have to voice our goodbyes... I won't be able to hold back my tears. Aww. Bye, I guess! Zato san. Well, good night, everybody. I've been flipped again. A truly had been a trying day. On our feet for hours, getting Gina to open up to us and learning the truth about that nemesis of the case. Physically and mentally, I was exhausted, and yet the idea of sleep seemed impossible. But I forced myself to close my eyes. And as a cacophony of scenes of our lives here in London played through my mind, Eventually, my fatigue triumphed and I fell into a deep sleep. To be continued. No, there's more? Oh, come on! How long is this gonna be? Okay, the small hours. Yes, I quite understand. That is a great weight off my mind. Rest assured, I shall put everything in place exactly as we, as we discussed. Thank you so much. It's been an honor and a pleasure to be acquainted with you, Mr. Sholmes. On the contrary, the pleasure has been mine. <laughs> <laughs> I bid you farewell and Godspeed. My dear madame. ah, you went to go see him. Well, that's nice that he's awake now. I wonder if he's going to be my second for the final case then. She was probably like, please, this man d cannot do shit on his own. Just don't, just do me a solid. Okay, so this means that we are literally halfway through the final episode because there's four parts to this trial because my god ace attorney cannot make it easy on us um but that's going to be all for today and for this recording because this went on for a while oh, almost four hours streaming only probably about three and a half recording 
Oh boy. This is going to be a doozy. I'll probably see how long it takes to do one to two parts of the trial the next time. If it takes a really long time, then I'll split it up. If I can get through it kind of quick like this, then we might just make it one chunk. But we shall see. Till next time.